you'd miss so much. He's a scholar of boxing. And he, there's probably not a man alive who knows more about the all-time greats. He could talk to you about, like, Harry Greb and Jack Johnson and the, 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 uh, Stanley, Stanley Ketchell. He he talked to you about guys that like you never heard before. Even the got it from this moment on to recognize me as the scholar of boxing. You don't know shit about that at all. You know what you're looking for? This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. He don't fucking miss. It's a goddamn genius up in the motherfucking daytime. Whoever do, man. I'm going to probably hit y'all with a double header today, man. You know how I do. Dropping fire content, but... uh. expert or want to be first with the content or you know whatever the case may be and uh, I feel like they rush too much and when Derek James um, and Errol Spence split was announced at first I called Cap I called Cap because I felt like Errol Spence was more solid than that I have to if this is true there's any truth to this I'm gonna have to coin the, the phrase uh y'all heard it here I might get it copyrighted because uh, uh you know how YouTubers be swagger jacket Era Spence. Era, not Arrow. Era Spence. El Spence, if he did this, is a huge mistake. Uh, Arrow Spence. I don't see how he could very well change up what he's been doing. He's successful. But hey, that's his prerogative. But I'm here to address some things because Arrow Spence, um, Derek James did an interview with uh, Cigar Talk. He gives them a lot of exclusive interviews. And uh, during the interview, he revealed some things. You know, people on YouTube now are saying that um, he had a lawsuit against him. And I think that now nah, I call Cap on that. I, I'm like, if he has time to go file an active lawsuit against Errol Spence, <laughs> all the meanwhile have a fight with Ryan Garcia and De uh, Devin Haney uh, coming up, which is going to be a, uh, the toughest fight, which Ryan is not completely focused. And you tell me that the trainer's not completely focused also. He's focused on Errol Spence. I think that that is fucking crazy. And I think it's stupid on his behalf. So I, I don't think that he has a lawsuit. I couldn't even see him suing Errol Spence, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't even know how that, that news got out. Derek James keeps a pretty tight knit, uh, camp. So when people be coming up with these theories and conspiracies and stuff, I don't know where they get them from. I heard Showbiz, the adult, said he had an insider. And he said, if you look at the round of gym, Derek James's gym, the bag, the bag has not been used. That's Errol Spence's bag. And you got all these uh, fucking blues clues detectives pulling out their microscopes and <laughs> analyzing shit and all this other stuff. And Derek James don't even let nobody in the gym. He didn't even want to let the guy from Cigar Talk into his gym. Uh, he said that he don't keep seats in the gym. He said it's it's like it's comparable to working a job at Walmart and your family come and pull a seat up there right beside you while you're doing your job at Walmart. So good analogy. It's a good analogy. It's a place of business. You know what I mean? You don't want all the tag longs in the gym. So, so a lot of things he said, I mean, but he did that. Look, no, 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 Grant, take it with a grain, a grain of salt. But he did use some loyal, uh, lawyer verbiage. He said, uh, they asked him about the internet and he said, you know, I, I pay attention to it, but not that much, so I could have plausible deniability. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a fucking lawyer word. What the fuck is going on here, Derek James? Maybe it's some truth to what he's saying. So, um, yeah, Derek James, but 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 Derek. First off, Errol Spence hasn't even been on the internet in a long time. You remember the last thing we seen from him was the TD Jakes picture with his tongue out saying "I'm back," and it was <laughs> TD Jakes sticking his tongue out. That's the last thing we heard of Errol Spence. But since then, we haven't heard that much from Errol Spence. But uh, this is not the first time that we've heard that it was trouble in paradise because a little bit after that fight, one thing I know there are sources that they can't reveal their names. And right after this, the fight, you know what I mean? After Earl Spence was beaten, all these rumor talk, uh, uh, rematch talks, Derek James was rumored to have split with Earl Spence then. 
and nobody really they just said they split they didn't it was just up out of nowhere we're like what the fuck but derrick james answered that he answered that before so this is not the first time that they've uh, alluded to trouble in paradise check him out you know, maybe he's he's leaving your, your camp i know that didn't come from you or them or anybody so just to clarify the rumors just what's what's going on with that? I, don't, I don't have to talk about it it's, it's nonsense when we we read it he was over my house he's only been on my house three times and it was one of those times so right. he's not even to talk about for me so he said that while the YouTubers were reporting it, that Errol Spence and him was, he was at Errol Spence's house and they were laughing about the shit. So like I said, too much breaking news on the internet and sources that you can't reveal. I'm going to start telling people if they give me an insider tip and I report on it, can I use your name? Because if I can't use your name, I'm not risking my reputation. That's how that shit could go. Cause that'll kill all that fucking rumor. You ever played a telephone game where you was a kid and at the end of the line, the, 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 the shit was different than what it started off as. That's how I feel with the with the insider information shit. Everybody always got a secret insider. If if we listen to insiders, that fight with Errol Spence versus Bud should have happened fucking three to four years before it actually did happen. But that's how insiders do. He said, YouTubers, you know, they make shit up for views, facts. These corny fools have nothing else to talk about facts. They be content mining rich. They'll wake up because see, <laughs> this is why I do boxing shows sporadic. I, I surfed them and I have to have some while I do it. That's why it takes me so long to prepare. I feel like they just hit the live button and they just content mine and they just have to all break it news. Oh, if you don't believe me, I got an expert here. He here. Steve Kim told you this or take this guy's advice for it. It's just they, it's a whole lot of foolishness. He said, you see, the dust has been <laughs> setting on the bag fireworks two months after a month destiny changes you can tell that's exactly how they be rob g that's exactly how they be bro just just fucking they they sound like they sound like the conspiracy theorists they be zigging and zagging the lines bro they be uh yeah yeah you're right if you look at the dust on the bag ain't no dust selling that's Errol spins bag he got his name up you're right bro you're 100 percent right like i said it's not the first time that they started this rumor but but like i said if 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 this is true um if there's some truth to it then um I mean, I, I'm gonna have to call Errol Spence er, Errol Spence from now on because that's 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 crazy. He at this point in his career, after taking a devastating loss like that, and like I said, Derek James is a teacher. He's a throwback. Like I heard people surfing the idea of what trainer he should go with, and they took out names like Robert Garcia, and no, those guys would never work with him because Robert Garcia. First off, Robert Garcia is a trainer. He's not a teacher, right? Derek James is a teacher, which means he's gonna come and implement a system. And the system that he implements, remember Anthony Joshua versus Salanius? He's going to have you take your guy very serious. He's going to have you catching catching shots because he don't believe in ducking his head. He believes in blocking, parrying shots. He uses a lot of upper body upper body movement, like like a lot of slipping and, and catching. And he, that's, that's Derrick James' style. He don't believe in moving your head. He believes you can get time by moving your head, which is true. But you got to learn how to move your head. But uh, yeah, so Derek James's system is already implemented in Errol uh, Errol Spence. So at this late in the game, he he can't change the shit. I don't even see a trainer fitting with Errol Spence. Like who the fuck is gonna train him? Like Freddie Roach? <laughs> Freddie Roach is well beyond. Like it's it's like all the great trainers are, are are. Let me say great trainers. Most of the great trainers are dead. That's I mean that's just the fact, right? Um, most of the great trainers are dead. And then the guys that are coming up that studied up under them, like a Freddie Roach, Teddy Alice is inactive. He's up under Customato. Freddie Roach has a disease. You know what I mean? I don't know. They don't know if you need me to tell you what he has. And then he's just old. He's an old guy. But not only that, like like uh, Derek James is a throwback to the to the old school. I remember uh, Riddick Bo told a story. Now I'm gonna tell you the story, and I'm gonna show you what Riddick Bo said because you know it's kind of hard to understand Riddick Bo if we keep it all the way real. But Riddick Bo told a story about Eddie Fudge, and he basically said that. Eddie Fudge uh, told him to take it easy on his sparring partner, and he didn't listen. And basically, Eddie Fudge caught him close and then threw a punch at him and then put his hand in his back pocket to draw his knife. And he said he, that he that's how he got at, uh, Reddy Bo's respect. But they didn't give a fuck about you being no champion or not. You, They treated you like a regular person. So check that, that's a, that, that was a teacher. But check Reddy Bo tell the story out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, come in, come in. 
I was in front. And as I gave to him, he throws his right hand at me. Because I was so sure young and shy, I took his right hand. But he knows that I was counting my right hand. So he pulls back and goes in his back pocket. And he fought, yeah. I know it was in his back pocket. I just laughed, man. What was it? He's going to get his mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. Chill out, man. I just said Papa Burke. He had his point of cross. And I went out there and played with the guy. And I did what I had to do for the next two or three miles. Okay. But from that point, the last time I saw him, he never got the most trouble out of me. He made me know he was the ball. Yeah. So he right there, right there and there, he kind of established that, hey, this is, you're going to do things my way or the highway? Look, know this might be a bad reference. Y'all ever seen Planet of the Apes? You remember when when he told Caesar we must show him show him our strength, and he was like, "We will." That's basically what Eddie Fudge did. He established dominance right away, and let him know, "Look, I don't give a fuck about your name or who you is or how much talent you got. You gonna listen to what I gotta say? Do if not, then get out of here." James Tony said his trainer, uh, Bill Bill Miller, he told him, he said, "Look, I'm too old." You know what I mean? I'm too old to be arguing and going back and forth for young people. You need me. I don't need you. And he was like, you know what I mean? You can either get with the program. I ain't got time to be arguing with nobody. Get with the program or just leave. This is what, this is what he told him. This is what old school trainers, Customato and Mike Tyson. Customato and Mike Tyson. Uh, Customato <laughs> called Mike Tyson out, according to Jose Torres. And we all know he's the biggest Mike Tyson hater outside of uh, Teddy Ellis and a couple other sports writers. But uh, Jose Torres said that Mike Tyson got called out by a to a fight by um uh, customado because he kept coming in late breaking the rules and customado told him he'll kick his ass called him out they were not scared of these guys a lot of these guys were former fighters themselves they just didn't have the uh the skill to make it to the highest level in boxing but they were teachers nonetheless and um Derek James is exactly that. Derek James uh, is a teacher. He has a system that he implements. He don't put up with no mess. A couple times during the interview, he said, I show fighters the front door. He kept alluding that. I show fighters the front door. And I was like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Is it subliminal? I, I couldn't I couldn't really grasp. I don't like speculating, you know, especially when I've already had something planted in my head by YouTubers, which is that he left. Errol Spence left him. So I try to keep an open mind. But I know Derek James is a teacher. That's a fact. You remember when Joe Goose said, you don't train a Ryan Garcia. You collaborate with him. Well, he addressed that stupid ass shit. This is what the teacher and Derek James had to say about that. Right. I know I, I seen an interview with Joe Goosen before. And he said uh, he said, you don't train Ryan Garcia. You collaborate with Ryan. Garcia. Yeah, right. I don't know exactly what he meant by that. I, well, man, I, I know what he means by that. Do you but, feel like that? No, I mean, you crazy. As fuck. Like, no, I mean, he can't. You can go if you don't want to. If you want to get down, you can go. I mean, it's yeah. like it's a big door. Everybody gonna work with you. Yeah. It's like the people gonna. I'm not gonna quit on him. Mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna. I think that's just that's just the giving up aspect of it. Right. Because you don't know how to reach somebody, so you just kind of like, whatever. No, no, you gonna do what I want you to do. We are gonna do it. Or it's gonna be over. I, don't, I mean, I don't need them. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean, and I don't mean like, like in a harsh way. way yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you wanna. We come and we work together. We grow together. We gonna bond together. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's like, if you feel like you got it, then you know, hey, yeah. you got it. Right. Is he is training him different than your other guys? Like, obviously, you, you've been with EJ, you know, Joshua been up in here. Like, you've right. so many big right. guys. Yeah, is yeah, it yeah. the same? What do you mean training from what perspective? Like, just the way that you train them and train him. Like, I guess the response is the same. Well, 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 put it like this. Everything is about developmental, right? So it's like you just... Work on the skill set. Developing this, developing that, developing this, developing that. Yeah. So everything I do, I focus on working on something. Every day is working on something. Not necessarily just working them out. I'm not working them out, I'm working on some particular. So you just want to kind of build, 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 build. See, he's not a strength and conditioning coach, basically. Because that's what has fucked up the game. Strength and conditioning coaches came in and started telling the guys whose job it was to understand physics and box anatomy and all this other stuff they start giving orders freddie roach said that alex ariza was giving many pacquiao orders in the corner they came they fucked up our sport by coming in telling the old school guys that they knew better than them and then also um bringing steroids into our sport that's where all the fucking peds come from these strength and conditioning guys well, they fucked up the sport but derrick james was basically telling he separated himself so the difference between the teacher 
And a trainer is a trainer going to come up with a good game plan. Ben Davidson, a teacher is going to show you little things, work on something different every day and, and tweak your weaknesses, but capitalize on your strengths. And that's what Derek James is. So, like I said, if Errol Spence leaves him, we're gonna, I'm going to start calling him Errol Spence because that's crazy, bro. You can't this late in the game. You leaving this guy. That is foolish, bro. But he brought up some interesting things, man. Uh, they asked him about um, about uh, Ryan Garcia and using the him using the shoulder roll. He basically said, you know, fighters basically do what they want to do. And he said he's only had two fighters that never did that. And I just knew for sure Errol Spence was going to be one of those fighters. But no, Errol Spence wasn't one of those fighters. He named the two fighters, and you're gonna probably be shocked at the two fighters that he named. But check them out. And him, like, I guess, all the response is the same. Well, 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 put it like this: everything is about developmental, right? So it's like you just work on the skill set, developing this, developing that, developing this, developing that. Yeah. So everything I do, I focus on working on something. Every day is working on something, not necessarily just working them out. I'm not working them out. I'm working on some particular. So you just want to kind of build, 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 build. And so, um, you know, it's, it's not any different because even when you, even when, like you be able to get like Arrow, you still gotta. Because every this is the thing about these fighters, it's very funny. They always have an idea how they want to fight somebody mm. until it's not working, <laughs> right? Right? And you really don't want to find out it's during. not working during the fight. So you want to. Hopefully, they gotta have an aha moment. Okay, man, you know, I'm tired of fighting with you. Yeah. Let's just get it, you know. And really. So, I mean, like, maybe two two of them never did that. I mean, Joshua never did that. Oh, yeah? No, no, no. And then Frank never really, he may have some ideas, but he never, like, you know what I mean? Like, went into his own. Right, yeah, yeah, everybody. Like, I see when Ryan did the shoulder roll in the last fight. Yeah, you know, like, Yo, yeah, man, man, what, you? yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I think that everybody, that's Floyd's thing, right? Yeah. I think that that's his thing. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm. In my era, we wasn't really copying nobody like that. Yeah, like doing it. Like, you would see something like, okay, I can enhance my game, but this, this, this. I'm not going to try to replicate it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, see, that's right. Okay. Well, what do you so, two things, two things to take away from that. Number one, I fucking told you so. When the boxing scholar tells you something, go pull out some motherfucking scrolls. If I tell you a duck could pull a truck, Shut up and hook the motherfucker up. I told you Anthony Joshua's best quality is that he's coachable and he will follow the game plan down to a T, which is why I knew he would be good with Ben Davison and why he looked like he was struggling against Eleni is because he was doing what exactly what Derrick James taught him, which was a whole new system that he was learning at the age of like 32, 33. I told you all this. Derrick James basically confirmed it. Anthony Joshua was very coachable. I said that's an un, that's a un, um underrated characteristic that fighters don't possess and anthony joshua has that he will listen and die on the coach's game plan even when he got knocked out by andy ruiz he kept going to his corner and he kept asking him what do i do what do i do and they didn't have any adjustments or any instructions for him they just kept telling him you're boxing beautiful keep doing it keep up the good work they even they even told him in the first usa fight that he was doing a beautiful job etc cetera, etc cetera. so anthony joshua will live and die on the game plan he's a very coachable guy he's like a main story used to call the Klitschko's a well-tuned machine because they used to follow his instructions to a t unless he told him to get aggressive because they didn't have the aggressiveness in them but anthony joshua he won't lack on the aggressiveness and if you tell him to go out and try to stop a guy he'll go out there and be very aggressive like he did against and got him and stopped him it's neither here nor there, but I told you so. But uh, he also talked about uh, fighters having their own game plans. And remember, he also trains Jamel Charlo, and he also trains Errol Spence. And it made me think, like, could that possibly be the trouble in paradise, which is why people have accused them of splitting up twice? Maybe this is a a, a, a tactical error that, that they made. Uh, Errol Spence, because I remember Errol Spence um, before the Ugas fight. Go back and look at that fight. I remember I was in Texas watching that fight live, right? And I remember L. Spence said he was watching a lot of the greats, Mario Hagler, et cetera, et cetera. And he was drawing inspiration from them. But it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. You got, I mean, I love that. Like, I, I still get a feeling to this day watching old Joe Lewis tapes that I can't explain. Same thing with Roberto Durant. So there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, if your trainer has a game plan, I mean, you also want to implement the game plan that y'all came up with and have been working on in the gym nonstop. That's crazy to work on it or, or make suggestions or stuff. What's the point of even having a coach? But I think that's kind of what he kind of hinted at because Errol Spence in that fight, he was hitting himself before the fight, which let me know he had been watching Marvin Hagler. It's only a fighter. That's the first fighter that comes to mind when he said that. And then he said he watched Marvin Hagler. And I, I'm just wondering if for the, the biggest fight in his career, which was Terrence Bud Crawford, did he implement some of that bullshit? 
<laughs> and that's where the, the 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 fucking the disagreement might possibly come from. But we all know why people fall out, money or women, right? But I think that might have been the, the the crack, the first crack, if they are split, assuming that they are. Like I don't like to speculate based off YouTube gossip, but I mean just assuming that that is a hundred percent true, then that might be why that um why the cause because that um the aerospace coming up with his own game plan. And then I thought about in the Jamel fight when he was like are you, you, in, the, in the corner where they showed the epilogue, are you here with me? Are, are you here? You, you you doing? I remember that him doing that in real time, and I'm like, that's what he's talking about. Also, Jamel Charlo probably went in that fight, did exactly what he wanted to do. So, I mean, the two fighters that he gave credit to was Anthony Joshua, which he didn't work with for what what two fights? Uh, Franklin and uh, Hellenius. He only worked with him for two fights, and he was still impressed by how much coachable he was, and especially how uh, he pro the biggest payday he's ever had was Anthony Joshua. The biggest star he's ever worked with was Anthony Joshua, and he still was coachable. So that's why he gave Anthony Joshua his kudos. And then not only Anthony Joshua, but he gave Frank uh, Martin. So it's like, okay, Frank Martin and Anthony Joshua, the two guys he said that don't pull out shit out their ass like Ryan Garcia pulled out a shoulder roll that they didn't even work out in the gym in the mid fight. And that's what makes those guys, I guess, uh, I'm, well, I don't guess, I know special. He said America has no heavyweights. Embarrassing. Uh, they have heavyweights. They're just not good. The whole heavyweight division as a, as a whole is, is kind of trash, bro. I'm going to just be honest with you. He said, has America ever been this weak in the heavyweight division? Yes, during the Klitschko era, it was, it was worse. He said, it's so bad. Vitaly had the aggression, but Vlad didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He said, what's up, ill status? He said, yo, yo, salute scholar in the chat. He said, oh, you're, b oh, you think you're bad, huh? You're a fucking choir boy compared to, compared to me, choir boy. I don't know what that means. So anyway, um, so yeah, uh, L Spence, um, L. Spence, I mean, he, Derek James kind of alluded that he um, he wasn't coachable. And then he said something interesting because the, the main reason we was there, the main reason we was there was because we wanted to find out if Errol Spence and Derek James had split. This was an hour after uh, people went live. Everybody's talked about it and, and got it all out their system. Right. So that was the main reason we was there. But he also brought up Ryan Garcia and he said, Ryan Garcia with that crazy shit. I mean, I'm curious about that, too. How are you dealing with that? And he basically said. He's dealing with it by telling Ryan to leave it. He said, don't even leave it at the door. He said, leave that shit in the parking lot. Like, don't even bring it past the gate. Leave that shit at the gate. Don't even bring it like, like he didn't want nothing to do with all that crazy, that humming and humming and humming and praying in the tongues and all that shit. It, the children, the babies, he don't want nothing to do with any of that shit. He said, leave that shit at the front door. And he said, just leave a box into to him. And I just kept going back in my head to that clip of Derrick James looking frustrated in the gym. I'm pretty sure Ryan don't comply. I mean, but at this point, who else do we got? If the rumors are true, Errol Spence left. Mel's career is in shambles because not only did he go in there and fucking bend over and toot his ass up for Canelo, but then he also was on a uh, video recording talking about how he, he hit his wife uh, and she called a girl. I mean, she she called the cops like a girl and he thought she was tougher than that. It's like, damn, bro, right after we just seen you roll over and show your belly to Canelo, you go and hit on a woman. So, yeah, he got that. I don't even know if he'll back, bounce back for that. I think that's going to haunt him for the rest of his life. He thought he could live with just going there and laying down. But now nah, that shit's on film. He even cried in the epilogue. So I don't think he can bounce back from that. But um, Derek James also brought up the um, Devin Haney fight. And he basically said he don't choose opponents. He don't pick and choose opponents for it, which I found weird because I he said he chose Duarte for uh, Ryan Garcia. I have the clip of that in my archives. I can play that fucking clip. I didn't upload it today, but I could definitely could show that shit, show that fact. But he said he chose Duarte for Ryan Garcia. But he elaborated a little bit more. He said if they bring him like three opponents, then he'll pick the opponent that's best suited for it the uh the guy who he's working with because a lot of these guys are coming to him errol spence is the only original guy you know what i mean he had to jail with mel he he has to he had to jail with anthony joshua and then he's trying to jail with ryan garcia so he said he wanted to jail which i told y'all that also but uh he basically said this about Devin haney you name the big fight go no i'm not doing that right. but if it's like if it's a choice it's like still, options oh yeah, yeah then it's different because right, when they had remember it was like roley they were saying all right either roley or Devin at one point and they was going back right, and forth right all right was you would you have went with I Devin would or Roley? Pref prefer to fight Roley first. I agree. Yeah. But I mean, it's like that didn't happen. So I think that the more, because really it's like it's a relationship. The more and more you bond, the deeper you get together. Yeah. I think the stronger the situation is. But so it's like, um, but at the same time, it's like, hey, you know, yeah, it is what it is. You got to <laughs> <We gotta, ain't laughs> make the best out of it. 
So, yeah, he basically said uh, he gave Devin Haney a ton of credit. He basically said that fighters today, um, he said fighters today, they they like to fight from long distance. They like to copy things that they've seen other people do. Uh, He talked about a lot of that shit. He talked about how how, uh, Tank Davis fights a little bit different than that. He has his own unique style. He gave Tank a bunch of credit and and kudos also. But like I said, the the meat and potatoes of why we got there was Errol Spence. And this made me kind of believe the the, the gossip on YouTube, bro. And you know, the the gossip's always normally wrong, but this might be one of the, the times where they were actually right. But check it out. Yeah, man, a lot of fans, you know, everybody love EJ, man. Everybody, like, you know, we haven't really heard from him since the, you know, the loss from Crawford, um, as far as media is concerned and all of that right. shit. Like, you know what, when you speak to him, like, we, where is his mind at? Or what's, you know, what's the energy with, with him? I mean, I don't really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on my other guys, so I'm really not, I haven't, I, I talked to him like maybe three weeks ago or whatever, but it's like, and we talked like for Frank and, you know, mm-hmm. Tank or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you just got to focus on like, everybody. You can't look back, except for, that's the issue. Everybody keep looking back, right? Mm. And you can't look, you can't move forward and looking back. You gonna bump into everything that's in front of you. Yeah. So I think that you know that's. I mean, I, I have you know, he, mentally, I guess he's okay. You know? Yeah. Do you do you feel like? Because only I feel like only the fighters and the trainers know when somebody still got it. Like I don't mean got it necessarily physically, but mentally that he still want to keep going in the sport because he's accomplished I think a that, lot. I think that I think that you know, um, you know, everybody. Still won it, right? Then they still won it. At least they won it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that, I think that, I believe that when you when you do your deal, and it's like, hey man, when the song starts singing, you gotta hate. When you dance, or you go ahead and start putting those chairs up. You yeah. know what I mean? How do you know when it's that time? How do you know as a fighter when it's like, all right, it's I mean, time. I mean, it's never time that time for up. fighters. I mean, they're never gonna say openly like, you know. Mike Tyson about to fight. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I say, how do you as the trainer be like, all right? I know based on well, this. Well, I mean, I mean, it, it put it like this. I don't think that if if he's healthy and that everything is good with him, he can keep doing what he want to do. Yeah. Right. But if you're not healthy and physical fitness or whatever is not right, then that's the issue. Whatever. Right. So I think that you just have to be whoever you are and whatever you want to do. You yeah. know. Okay. Um, I ain't trying to re- retire EJ in this conversation. I'm just yeah, saying you, you know, do what you want. I, mean, <laughs> I ain't I trying mean, to retire. Like, everybody, yeah, everybody got to. I like to see him at 50. Person. I mean, everybody, you know, hey, that could be, that's, that's him. That's going to be a possibility for him also. Yeah. Is it a possibility to you a rematch with Crawford? Like, is that something that you would want as the coach? I mean, that's up to him. I'm not involved in that. I mean, like, the fighters fight who they want to fight. You know what I mean? I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, um. But you don't have a preference? Like, would you want I mean, to see that? Put like this. I would say this. If you're going to fight, I would think that would be the fight to fight. Mm. Only because, I mean, you know. If you're gonna fight, that's what I would think. Yeah, okay. I mean, cause I mean, cause it's like, you know, nobody else, you know, you can move in another direction, but, you know, finish that deal out. Uh, he said he talked to Errol Spence three weeks ago, and then he said, uh, he said, you can't look back. And I was like, what the fuck do we mean by that? He don't never had that type of energy for Errol Spence. So I was like, okay, yeah. It might be some truth to what these uh, the gossip rumors and YouTube uh, gossip. It might be some truth to that. And like I said, if, if there's any truth to that, man, we, I'm going to have to start calling Errol Spence, Errol Spence, man. This is a big era in as far as his career is going. And and why are you, leave, why are you leaving Derrick James? You could bring somebody in to work along with Derrick James. That's what let me know that if this is true, it's, it has to do with money. And this is how I look at it, right? So when Errol Spence is making good paydays, you know what I mean? And it, this ain't the first time this happened. Most most times, this is what happened. Happened with Mike Tyson and Kevin Rooney. Whenever uh, he got the big Spinks fight and made uh, historical money for himself and his family. It lo- they looking at it like, if if because boxers, they check get beat up before it get to them. The 33 and a third goes to the manager uh, and fucking 10% goes to the trainer. So if I'm paying that, you know what I mean? I'm getting like a million dollar payday. You know what I mean? I'm only taking a little bit at home. And then I get the biggest payday of my life. And it's say 14 million, but I'm only taking home 4 million. Then I mean, shit, it's, I'm pretty sure Earl Spence like, hey, Derek James, you know what I mean? Y- your role didn't change. You still prepared me the same way. And actually I went in there and got my ass whooped. So why do I owe you 10%? of my biggest payday. So I ain't, I'm not going to lie to y'all. As weird as that sounds, man, y'all might think it's disloyal. I agree with it. Why is it standard 10%?
why is it standing ten percent of my purse? You know what I mean? Especially when, bro, Derrick James he that made well over a million dollars off of Errol Spence. This is just me and how I look at it, and knowing the uh, like, like looking at the business of boxing, like how thirty three and a third is standard. That shit is all from the mob days when the boxing was controlled by mob. Think about that for a second. Mob controlled boxing still has percentages and splits now today where there's supposed to be no mafia. So they fuck fighters back then. I feel like they fucking fighters now. The sanctioning fees, all that other stuff. It's like at the end of the day, bro, the boxer probably takes home 40 percent of his own purse, which I think is ridiculous. He said Derek James is the only one and he's only in Ryan's camp for the money. I agree. He said, Ryan going to leave Derrick James once he loses to Haney. I don't know about that. It depends like that. So what you say is probable, probable, right? But let's just say it's a scenario where Derek, he loses and Derrick James is there for him because uh, his family, obviously, ain't there. they just standing for the money, right? So let's just say he loses and Derrick James becomes kind of what he was to Errol Spence, like a father figure. I can see him still saying with Derrick James. He's paying his family to, to stick him in the ring with mental health issues. So, I mean... Might as well pay somebody who actually has your best interest at heart and can teach you the sport of boxing. So I don't know. He said Ryan will try to get, go back to Canelo and Eddie. That that IG that IG post said it all. I didn't see the IG post, bro. He said Earl Spitz is weak minded. He said nothing new. Prisoners of the moment. He said my nigga like that. So what scholar says Spence tweeted like two years ago that he doesn't have that he doesn't give his trainer a percentage. Oh, so if he treated then it, then why are they falling out up over money? Said, I need my wrench, my brother. He said, fighters are known to known as the greatest liars on earth. As experienced person will never fully trust a fighter. Shit, I think I say their whole business is full of fucking from the trainers. To the fucking cut man, to all of them, it's a full of snakes. Boxing is the only sport where it's ran by the mice, not the lions. The lot, the mightiest people in the sport are the boxers, and they're they're the most taken advantage advantage of and end up the worst at the end of their career. He said, "Cause Arrow didn't execute the plan. Now Derrick James doesn't deserve his money." Yeah, I think you I think you missing what I'm trying to say like that. So anyway, uh, so let me let me let me give you perspective like that. Because I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Emmanuel Stewart is probably one of the greatest trainers of all time, right? There was a time where Holyfield fought Reddy Bow, and he had a Georgie Benton in his corner, right? Georgie Benton was a great trainer also, but Emmanuel Stewart was just better. Emmanuel Stewart is probably top five all time. But uh, and he, then he had that cold ass fucking. He had the dream team of trainers in his stable, so he had he also had help on top of being a fucking great mind. You know what I mean? It'd be like Bill Belichick with a team of fucking great NFL coaches. You know what I mean? So. Um, for the rematch with uh, with uh, Riddick Bow, he went out and got Emmanuel Stewart, right? And um, the, Emmanuel Stewart had a lot of reason to why he beat Riddick Bow in the second fight. When Fan Man came in, Emmanuel Stewart started wrapping him up in a whole bunch of clothes so he wouldn't get cold. You know what I mean? So he still was warm whenever the fight continued. It was just a lot of stuff he did. And then after they hit each other at the bell, you see Emmanuel Stewart tackle him. He was just he, he, good game plan that he came up with, executed and then he just the adjustments on the fly, keeping him warm when Fan Man came out there. He he was so sharp in that fight that Riddick Bow accused uh, Holyfield of planning that because Emmanuel Stewart adjusted to it so easy. That's how cold Emmanuel Stewart was, right? But Emmanuel Stewart worked with him and he won the second fight, right? And they went and re they, uh, Emmanuel Stewart uh, was trying to take a uh, large percentage of his purse which I'm pretty sure is what happened with Derrick James because, I mean, people fall out over women and money, bro. That's the only two things, right? Politics. And um, this is what uh, Holyfield had to say. Now, it's kind of hard to understand him. We're going to play the clip and break it down afterwards. But check him out. In the, in the rematch, in the second fight, uh, you I know you had Emmanuel Stewart in your corner. How do you feel like, what was it like working with Emmanuel Stewart and, and how do you feel uh, he improved you going into that rematch? Well, there was no doubt that he, you know, been, um, he definitely is one of the greatest trainers that's out there, you know. So I, you know, I came from a, a great trainer. His name was Georgie Ben. Oh, the great. And Georgie Ben, Georgie Ben was super. I like that. And, uh, but, uh, but, uh, he made you sure he is, is definitely a top. He one of them guys that, who, who started hard and he, I mean, I just, he, 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 there's a lot of people want it. He, 
I mean, he's he's a philosopher. He 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 know the game. He really, 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 really know the game. Yeah. Was there like anything that he ever told you that 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 that, that sticks out in your mind about boxing? Well, you know, after after me, you know, after me, strategy. He's very calm and cool, collected. You know, he's he's a talker. You know, he's a motivator. You know, it's, it's almost like uh, almost like, but I. You would say what's called uh, what what the uh, guy that trained Ali. Oh, uh, Angelo Dundee. Yeah, like, and, 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 and Angelo D- Dundee was very good. Now, 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 uh, Emmanuel Stewart is tough, just like that. I'm talking about he, a good talker, but he, he, he worked with you more. He can show you how to do it. Yeah. So he, he, he's not just, just a talker. He, you know, he's not about talking. He just, I'm talking about he, he understands the game that, in, out, anything, food, everything. He just like drive the car, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything has something to do with boxing. He, 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 he can satisfy you with all that. He just that one guy that 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 the, it was just it just as uh, well, uh, Barry Gordon was to music. He's like that to boxing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a great analogy. <laughs> Right. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he was just like that. I'm like, Shh, man, he, he, you know, he just, he just, had, it wasn't enough for him. If it was, if he had about 10 or 15 for him, I said, man, oh man, I, you, the whole game would be shaking up because he was just that good. Yeah, because like, it, it sounds like Emmanuel Stewart, he knew how to like get into the minds of fighters and, and make them confident in, about what they were doing, but then he was also able to show you yeah, I said, he, he was very good. And, you know, I said, all, the, all these good people asked ask me, what's the difference? I said, it's just real simple. I said, uh, I said he, I said, because they were asking me, so then why did you, you leave him? I said, because the fact that the matter, I said, I said, he, 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 I told him, you know, he, he asked me, what is, you know, what are you going to get? And I said, no, no, I said, you know, I said, I, I said, I don't pay by the percentage. And he said, I said, no, I said, I said, no, I don't pay by the percentage. I said, I said because the fact is, I said, look, I, I already know how to box. <laughs> I, just need to, I said, I just need you put my piece of my mouth and you, you know, tell me the little thing that you know. I said, but you, I said, you ain't, you ain't here no but I said, you, I said, you only come six weeks to train me. Yeah. And, and you know, and then you can see the different is just that the other people didn't make the money that I make. Every time I fought, I was making ten to twenty million dollars a fight. Dang. <laughs> I, so, I was so, I see, I'm, I'm the, I'm, I'm the, you know, when I when I beat like when I when I beat Buster Douglas, when I beat Buster Douglas, I shoot, I made eight million dollars right then and there. Most people ain't, ain't make that kind of money on their first first match. On yeah. my second match, I made twenty two million. <laughs> so, <laughs> my third my third match, I made eighteen. I'm like I'm like this that. Then when I fought, when I fought when when I lost the fight, I lost his move. I sure I, I I made twenty. <laughs> so, I'm like, you know, so all my fights were, were big fights. So the only thing is that. The whole big thing is that, no, so I'm not going to give you temperance when you come here six weeks and you don't get 10%, uh, you know, you don't get $2 million <laughs> for six weeks. <laughs> no. But, you know, then, then again, he went with me when I was a kid. Yeah. It's a, it's a different thing is he was with me ever since I was a kid. I said, you know, so when I came to him, I was, I was already this already. Yeah, you were already a, an established, you know, championship okay. fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I already established, right? I'm not going to give you 10%. No, and which, which, you know, which I, you know, I told you, I told him, I said, you know, I get, I, I get, I, I get 250,000. 
but he had two hundred ten thousand for six weeks. <laughs> Well, how many people get two hundred fifty thousand dollars six weeks? I'm sure that's what he got. That's what he got. So you gave him two hundred fifty thousand for the for the six week camp. Like two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Six week camp. That's, that's that's still not bad though. I mean, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, 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 that ain't bad. That's great. Man. That's great money. Well, a, a lot of trainers I, never I, see that in a whole career. That one thing. I'm, that that one thing. I'm like, you know. I'm like, you know, the point of the balance chapter, but that's how much money I was making. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you you uh, definitely took care of him, and he took care of you. So, yeah, it would it, it would have been interesting to see, like though, like how how uh, your career would have evolved if, if you and Emmanuel had stayed together after the second bow fight. Cronk fighters? Wait, wait, he have he just have he's one of them guys I like to be around a lot of people. Okay, okay. And you're more like to yourself. Well, you know, my thing is that, you know, I, I was gonna be by myself anyway, you know, but after 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 the boxing over when when the boxing is over, I actually after boxing is over, when I get through I, I, I go back by myself. I don't I don't I, I ain't like, you know, my own thing. I ain't like a, like a group of people. I don't, see, my own thing, I don't like that stuff. Yeah, like an entourage. Yeah. You don't want an entourage. I think, you know, my own thing, I just want to go to sleep. But my own thing, I, I, I. So, I mean, I can see the same thing going. It's like. I, I can see both sides. I don't think I don't think uh, Earl Spence is wrong in firing Derrick James. I think as as people on the outside looking in, because they count other people's money, they feel like Derrick James deserve it. But I mean, let's let's be all the way real about it. Uh, Jamel Charlo went to Derrick James because of Earl Spence. Ryan Garcia went to Derrick James because of Earl Spence. Anthony Joshua. So if Earl Spence is bringing them all these paydays, I mean. Why are you still gonna charge the man ten percent, especially when he give you he done he probably he done paid you well over a million dollars. You know what I mean? Get, true enough, you are in there with the heat, but you're not taking no punches, brother. He taking all the punches and that beating from Spence that took years off Earl Spence's life. And we're gonna be all the way honest with it. So I mean, I don't disagree with Earl Spence. He said they had a great one run. It's it's over probably. That's a fact. He said, can't change a contract after you sign it. Don't sign a contract, then cry about it because you don't like the outcome. Stand on business, as the young folks say. Hilarious. He said, it's nothing new for boxers to move on to a different trainer. L. Spence should retire unless he wants his eye to fall out. <laughs> he said, brother Pittsburgh T, I thought you didn't know what stand on business meant. Hilarious. Evander Holyfield seemed like a wonderful person. One of the nicest people in boxing, head butter and uh, uh, a dickhead. Evander Holyfield's sister took a second mortgage out on his house and lost it, and he never put charges on her. It's amazing how a guy can be so forgiving. What? <laughs> what? Maybe, uh, uh, BBO, what if he put beats on the behind the scenes, bro? He said, Derek was with Earl Spence since he was a kid. Different context. The links doesn't work. Are you streaming directly from YouTube? He said, no, I'm doing a stream. He said, Earl shouldn't give, Earl shouldn't have agreed to it. He have made his salary conditional up on victory. He didn't pay the man, fire him fine, but pay him what you agreed to. He said, greetings, good brother, like that. <laughs> What's up like that? Peace and blessings, peace and rest to the nation and the panel and the people in the chat, brother. How you doing, brother? <laughs> brother, brother, brother. Don't come in with no bullshit, brother. Brother, brother. I, I can't believe, bro. I can't believe what you're saying, brother. Go ahead. Tell me. Holyfield's situation, it definitely have context. I mean, I, I, look, look, look. 
and because he did that, bro, doesn't mean it's right. I mean, let's be honest, bro. How's it everything always fine until the month the bags start increasing? Then we got to start changing the rules of what we agreed upon. So when you ain't, when you only making maybe um, fifty thousand a fight, it's cool to pay me my five thousand, right? And 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 we we willing to struggle with each other. But then once the bags start getting uh, on the higher end, okay, you made made fourteen. Now you owe me one point four million. What's the problem? Why can't you keep the same practice you kept? When we was at the bottom, when we was when we was uh, on Raymond, uh, I mean Oodle Noodle Marathon, when we was eating eggs, you know what I'm saying? When we was eating, uh, we was taking bread and making them into pancakes, you know what I'm saying? So why is it that we wait until the money get higher to start changing the rules, bro? You can't start. You you wouldn't count my pockets when we when you was only making fifty thousand a fight. So why are you starting to count them now? So uh, let me give you a different perspective. I'm gonna give you a different perspective. So let's say, let's say, let's say I hire you onto my channel, yeah. right? And we just start, but we start making more money. But YouTube start like YouTube like fuck my like because I tell you, fighters only make forty percent of their purse, bro. They looking at it like if everybody robbing me, then why would you want to rob me also? Like yeah, I'm making bigger paydays, but if I paid you a hundred thousand dollars for the last fight, and I'm giving ten percent, and I'm give just giving you a million for this fight, you've made more money. Why do you want that ten percent? What? Why do you what? want that, bro? Make You're 10? making a million dollars, bro. Bro, no, bro, no. I, I want the ten percent because of the sacrifices I had to make in the beginning. Like that's the whole point. We sacrifice in the beginning so we can get to this point. Like without Derrick James, bro. Errol Spence would have been uh, fucking at the AT uh, down there in Dallas. He would have been working at the AT and T fucking plant. Down bro, there. cut like, it out. On, bro. Cut it. Errol Spence here, got talent. We, we we gonna stop that, bro. Errol Spence got fucking talent, bro. We are not for to act like this is this ain't Rowley we talking he about bum. here, bro. I'm not saying he a bum. I'm just saying like without Derrick James, like with him being a professional. Okay, fighter, I'm so sure what would Derrick James be without Errol Spence? Uh, he would He would be at the YMCA fighter. telling everybody no, how to no, throw no, left hooks. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he he was a professional fighter, and he, I'm sure he would have found. Bro, I mean, we look, well, we not going missing that man's professional career, bro. Because him and Bo Mac are great trainers, but their careers was ass, bro. Okay. Bo okay, Mac then. lost to Butterbean by decision, bro. Butterbean not even known for beating fighters by decision, but he beat Bo Mac by decision, bro. That's fucking crazy. Okay. It happens. Look, 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 but let's say this though, bro. I, I mean, look, bro. I, I get what you're trying to say, but I feel like that's switching up on your date. Like you ain't supposed. Look, in Holyfield situation, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Like I was already established. I had already been doing this my whole life. You come in the picture for six weeks, but you got to remember, like Derek James and and Earl is working year round. Like yeah, they may go three, four, you know, whatever periods that they uh take their hiatus. As far as training, but Earl coming to the gym when he don't have a fight count. Earl coming to the gym and getting pointers when he when 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 like bro, no, bro. I, I think in that so no, nah, you missing you missing what Holyfield was saying, bro. Holyfield wasn't saying that Emmanuel Stewart came into his life for six weeks. He's saying that it, the training camp was only six weeks. Is what he's saying. So Derek James, so let, let's 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 do let's use a little logic. You take us with a grain of salt, but we could just throw stuff out there. Tell me if you think what my logic is wrong, right? So, Errol Spence has a fight coming up. Let's throw him in there with fucking Fendor, right? Fendor. Let's say he's still with Derek James. Derek James is big, busy with Ryan Garcia. At the time, he was busy with Anthony Joshua. He had all three of those people at one time, and Jamel Charlo, right? So, he has to squeeze in Errol Spence, right? Because be before Errol Spence lost, he had Jamel Charlo, Anthony Joshua, <laughs> Ryan Garcia and Errol Spence. So he's he his time is split. He's only one person, right? So he was probably talking to him less like he was whenever they were up and coming, like a father figure, less on the phone because he's so busy. And then he would come in, he came in for that amount of time and trained them. Does he deserve a lot of money? No, bro. If you do six weeks worth of uh, work, bro, you deserve six weeks worth of pay, bro. But how do you gauge six See, look, this is what I'm saying, bro. Can you hear me? I can hear you, bro. Okay, but like, first off, how do you gain six worth, uh, six weeks worth of work when, when that six weeks worth of work gave you the ability to go in there and win? 
Like if you no 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 he didn't no no he didn't win, bro. We 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 saw okay, what happened. Okay, bro. okay, he lost. He lost. We saw. But, I still got blood on my shirt, bro. I was ringside. But, 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 but look, he didn't have a problem with the game plan leading up to him. You remember we gonna break him. We are gonna break him spiritually, physically, mentally. Even like nah, he know, didn't say that. that shit, right? He didn't. He yes, didn't. He, he didn't say none of that, bro. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Bro, that was that Mama Oya oh, jumped into him, no, bro. No, bro. Ma- Mama Oya oh, jumped into that uh, man. That that went. Uh, he said that on uh, Tyson's show. He no, was it Tyson or Gilly the Kid? It was either one of them. He was like, "We gonna break." Yeah, it was Gilly the Kid. He was like, "We gonna break him mentally, physically, and probably." Yeah, he spiritually. said it. He's bro. He yeah. said it. So, Fine. He said so, it. And if I'm wrong for that, I don't give a fuck. Straight up. <laughs> so the game plan was to come in there and do what they always do but then when the result wasn't produced now you trying to tell it now you trying to look at a nigga a paper like hey bro you know what i'm saying bro you know god damn we got to start really looking at these numbers and you got to get an understanding but why wouldn't the understanding uh present it beforehand this is my thing if you're gonna switch up on motherfuckers switch up beforehand don't switch up after the fact don't switch up like once you get the results and now you acting like you wasn't a part of it. You you wasn't co-signing the game plan. But like that, like that. Okay, now now you seen it from Derek James' side. Now let's go to the other side, right? So yeah. fighters have to pay sanctioning fee because remember Earl Spence mentioned that before the fight. So he was already letting us know he's a disgruntled employee, but like he, he tired of spending his money before the fight. He like we need sanction fees. So you got sanctioning fees. I remember uh, 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 one of the fighters like the belt's not even fucking gold, so we're playing for a belt that ain't even fucking gold. What they do with the money? He said it's a long time ago. Then he said managers are taking out fucking thirty three and a third. Then you got your trainers taking out ten percent. He said if you see five million dollars, you're only taking forty percent of that home, and then you got to pay taxes on that on, on the the not the forty percent, the hundred okay. percent of what the whole total purse was. So you if you see a big number, bro. Now this is the fighter. If you think like man, I'm fighting Bud Crawford, got my ass whipped, and I made fucking $10 million, bro. But that $10 million really like two or three, bro. What, bro, I took the ass whooping. Wouldn't you as a trainer, bro, want to take a pay cut for me, bro? I'm just saying. If if you no, no, you look you looking at it like this, bro, you looking at it like, bro, if you, if, if, I, if I was with you shooting in the gym, bro, you should want to look out for me. Man. And I'm looking at it like, nigga, I just got my ass towed the fuck up. For three for three million dollars, don't you want me to take a majority? I got kids. But that's not standing on business. That's not standing on principles, brother. Like just because you got the so so then that 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 that's what caused a lot of confusion when we interact with each other on the business level. Because you didn't get the result that you wanted, now I'm able to start changing stipulations that wasn't ever discussed. Like what? Like bro, this is so so. Like, this I mean, it's just speculation. I don't know if they have a con. I don't know if he has an actual contract with Derrick James. I'm just assuming that that. I mean, I'm assuming that they that they don't that they, that maybe it's fight to fight because I've never heard of a, a a trainer specific. That's why they leave trainers so frequently. Like fucking uh Triple G left uh what's his name, Abel Sanchez. Uh fucking Andy Ruiz left after he won the belt. He left uh. No, he did the rematch, and then he left that guy. I don't think they're exclusively signed to the trainer. It's just that if the trainer goes into the fight with them, they get that, their their ten percent. There's no fight, bro. So I mean, is he is I, I'm imagining that he's arguing for that that fight that they had last. And I'm just saying, bro. In general, bro, if if he loves Earl Spence like he say, Earl Spence done looked out for him way more than he done looked out for Earl Spence. <laughs> yes, he, you know oh, bro. Errol Spence is not no bum, bro. Errol Spence was going to be Errol Spence with or without Derrick James, bro. Errol Spence was good, bro. He was on the Olympic team. He was a good fighter, bro. Okay, who got but he there? But he Derrick was so James. good, and his talent was so good, bro. And he was, I, I, you know, I was stepping. He was stepping so hard, bro, that Anthony Joshua brought his ass all the way from the UK. Uh uh, Ryan Garcia brought his ass. He escaped from the insane asylum, bro, to go work with fucking Derrick James, bro. He brought him the biggest stars in boxing. He basically had all the big stars, but Canelo, bro. So no, it's like, bro, so Derrick James brought himself. Like, what? what bro, what, cut what it out, bro. About here? Cut it out, bro. So you think? So you think that they here. went to? They went? They would have went to work with Derrick James, who don't believe in moving your head without Earl Spitz? bro. Knock it off, bro. Bro, bro, look, look, look. This is what I'm saying, bro. This is the equivalent of. Two homeboys in high school. They both don't have a car, right? So they walking everywhere. And both of them swearing to God when they get a car. I swear to God, 
bro, we about to be, bro, I swear, bro, every day I'm come pick you up, my, my nigga. And then, like, one of them get the car, and now he getting new friends acting like he don't know what the fuck going on. Like, bro, how can you change up? Like, that's crazy, bro. If I got, if I was a boxer, and I went in there on the biggest fight and got my ass whooped, I'm still paying. Why am I change? Bro, if I'm going to try to stick anybody, it's going to be the manager, the people that I don't know. I'm going to try to find a loophole to where I don't got to pay this motherfucker 33%. And then if, if it, like, I'm going to try to find bro. Find, huh? The standard. Okay, so why you ain't got to Maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe that's what he's doing because you know he has, he got man down promotions. That's what the, that's what the, all that shit's supposed to be to, uh, to, for him to get a majority of his money. And, and maybe that's what he's doing with Derrick James. Like, bro, let me cut this, let me cut this quarter too, bro. How about 5%? Maybe Derrick James ain't having that shit. Maybe he's mad that he's not the focal point of Derrick James. I don't know, bro. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of coulda, shoulda, wouldas. I ain't expect the gadget yet, bro. Yeah, yeah. Notice I said, yeah, bro. He said, preach. He said, preach like that. Tell him, young gun. He said, I completely agree with philosopher like that. They need each other for both of their careers. Uh, I disagree with that. He said, like when Meg Thee Stallion tried to switch up on Carl Crawford in 1501. He said, agree. Yep. Good, good brother like that. He said, you worth what you negotiate for. I don't think it's no contract between the two, though. He said, hey, scholar, I just got back from the grocery store and I'm cooking dinner. How are you doing? <laughs> so, damn, bro. He told me your whole day. Did you throw the frisbee at the dog, bro? What's up, DJ? He said, what country has uh, do you think has the most loyal fans? It's definitely the UK. It's the UK. Yeah, Mexico has the, probably has the most uh, uh, fucking enthusiastic fans like about their fighters and loyal. But when they fighters lose, bro, they be quick to throw them away, bro. Like they only, There was a split because them embracing Oscar De La Hoya. But no, nah, I like that, bro. I just look at it like like if it would if if I trained you, bro. If I trained you, right, and you got to where you know what I mean you was big. You got to remember, a lot of trainers get left. Like fucking Abel Sanchez didn't have a say in it. Fucking uh, Manny Robles didn't have a say in it, bro. He he, bro. Manny Robles got thrown on the bus so bad, bro. He got. He got fucking Andy Ruiz all the way to the title shot where Anthony Joshua came up with a game plan that got him to upset Anthony Joshua, bro. Then in the rematch, he goes and eats a ton of food at the dinner table, bro. Stuffs his face, bro, and goes into the rematch and loses. That has nothing to do with Robles, bro. Robles said he was trying to get him to train. He was telling him he's slacking. He's he's doing what a trainer do. You can only do so much. You can't do the crutches for him, bro. You can't call the fight off. You're the, the trainer's job is to train, bro. And after that fight, he fires uh, Manny Robles for absolutely nothing, bro. So, like I said, I, I, like looking at the the pattern of it, like I said, I don't, I don't know, bro. This is where the, the insiders will probably come in handy, bro. But, but uh, man, I don't have none on my show, bro. Like I said, I don't know if you heard this part. Like that, I'm going to start doing sources say shit, bro. I'm going to be like, can I, I say your name? If I can't say your name, I'm not doing this sources say shit, bro. We're not going to do the telephone game of secrecy, bro. My, my, my credibility on the line. If I look like an idiot, I want them to go to Joe Schmo and be like, well, Joe Schmo go to Boxer Scholar. Like, nah, fuck that shit. But, um, yeah, so I don't think he's under contract. Like, just looking at the, 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 the fucking the history of boxing, Kevin Rooney getting left. Because Kevin Rooney sued Mike Tyson, and he said, I have a contract. And the reason he got out of that contract, they paid Kevin Rooney his, his money, like a little step-aside money, but he, he he didn't get no future earnings of Mike Tyson's purse because they made Mike Tyson sign that contract when he was like 15 years old, bro, that Kevin Rooney would be his trainer forever. And I'm pretty sure that Derrick James doesn't have that with Errol Spence, bro. And even if, bro, that make me look at Derrick James a little more weird if he does have that contract. So, nah, bro. Derrick James got to chill out on this one, bro. He about to go into a fight. He need to be focused on Ron Garcia because Ron Garcia not focused on Devin Haney, bro. He need to focus on his fight before he not make it to his fight, bro. If 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 this is true about... The, I think the YouTubers are stretching and pulling this shit, talking about lawsuits and stuff, bro. I don't think that that's the case. But um, he need to be focused on his, on his fight coming up, bro. He said, do you think boxers that live in the UK, the U.S. should move to the U.K. and other places to create boxing careers? Absolutely not. Said, thoughts on Shannon Briggs versus Rampage Jackson. That fight was supposed to happen probably like two years ago. I don't think that fight's ever going to happen. I think Rampage is getting older and fatter and so is Shannon Briggs. And neither one of them will end up getting in the ring because they should have did it years ago where both of them were still taking steroids. 
and still, you know what I mean, somewhat, you know what I mean, in decent fighting shape. They've been promoting that fight for years. Like they they promoted the t- two of them getting in the ring, and all they did was they they were the coaches for the teams of boxing versus UFC. And it was like, what the fuck? What is this stupid ass shit? And they did it like Ultimate Fighter, where they were supposed to fight at the end, but I don't think it's gonna happen. They had a date. They had a date back in the day, but it never happened. He said that's over uh, overheard. Doesn't matter who took the ass whooping. That's the business. Nah, fuck that. See, that's the problem with our sport, Rob G. Everybody got their hands on the check of the fighter who's taking brain damage, bro. We got to do something about that shit, bro. We got to be better than the NFL, bro. The NFL does that. And it's like, nah, bro. Like, nah. L. Spitz was thrown out of a car going 100 miles per hour, bro. That man overcame. That had nothing to do with Derrick James. When he when he was depressed, Derrick James, went, bro, he had to deal with that shit by himself. Depression is a lonely road, bro. He had to work himself back in. He was watching old film. He was doing all this shit, bro. So I say him taking that ass whooping from Bud, bro. If if this was me, and, and it's just me, bro, and I ain't in no financial trouble and I'm Derrick James, or, bro, I'd take a pay cut, bro. If like that, if I train like that, and like that got to his biggest payday, and he done made me a millionaire already, and then he done brought other fighters to me, and then he was like, look, man, I, I got my ass whipped in that fight, you know what I mean, and my uh, my purse ain't looking right, my money looking funny, man, I'm going to just pay you a million. And I say, no, 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 no. Yo, overall purse was $7 million. I want 10% of $7 million, or whatever the case may be, $20 million. I want 10% of $20 million. And you like, nah, I'm gonna just give you a million. I would, bro. I don't, I can't speak for everybody Stop. else, bro. I'm o I'm not Stop. greedy, bro. Stop. Go ahead. Scholar, bro. You cannot just be throwing in there all this imaginary shit. First off, his bag was definitely, definitely. What you mean the look, whole situation look, imaginary? Look, look, handsome, look his his bag looked handsome, brother. Real handsome. You understand? How you I'm know saying? that? It, it was so handsome that him and his girl went to Spain right after the fight. Living they best. Oh, now we trip watching. You a passport, bro. No, 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 no. No, this is what I'm saying, brother. No, I'm glad I go ahead. You out here here blowing money, going to Spain, throwing money. You at the strip club, throwing money at these bitches. And you telling me that your money fucked up? Now your money fucked up. But had you won, this is what I'm saying. Because it's a perspective thing. So if you would have won, your money wouldn't have been fucked up because you won. Because your ego still intact. Your pride still intact, but because now you lost, and your perspective of, of how everything is going on in your life changes, now your money fucked up. But you get in the same bag that you would have got if you won. So the only thing is changing is your emotion about the outcome of what happened, bro. And we all know, we all know in this fight, it was a 50 50 fight. You had the opportunity to get your ass whooped. Uh, he told you he gonna whoop you. He gonna whoop you like he wanted your children. So when it happened, why do I gotta? Why do I gotta compromise my bag when your bag is still the same from the beginning of when we negotiated? Uh, when you negotiated the fight, nothing changes when you lose about the bag. The bag remain the same whether you win or lose. Maybe you would have got a little bit more money because you would have had a little more, maybe a couple more endorsements, a couple more interviews, shit like that. But outside of that, bro, the bag is still the same. Is when you negotiate what changes about a because okay, let's say he won, right? But he still took a good beating. So the hospital uh, bill is gonna be the same if you would have won, but you took a good beating. So I don't see how that changes how a person that been with you since you was fourteen, right? He took he took you can't you can't forget Derry took him around his arm. Errol really from he really you know I'm gonna get like them niggas uh in Atlanta. That nigga really from New York. He really from New York. Eric took him around his arm, embraced him, showed him, showed him how Dallas niggas really get down, and help him flourish. And now y'all accept him one as y'all own, bro. So how can you not repay that man, brother? How can you not keep your word, brother? Please answer that for me, brother. So I say this. I say this, bro, to uh, what you just said. Playing, playing the short. So look, 
what I say is this, bro. Um, El Spitz, and, I, and this is allegedly, bro. This is allegedly. Like, if this is me doing the, the, the pocket watching shit, I'm not good at that game, bro. You got to go to other YouTubers for that shit, bro. So this is me doing the pocket watching shit, bro. I know this shit be like the crust at, at the restaurant, bro. It never, it's never really what they say it is. But this is allegedly what he got paid, right? $25 million, right? Mm. $25 million. I want my two point five. <laughs> so, Derek James got two point five of that, right? So, if you're telling me if he if he got paid this, and he told Derek James like I'm gonna just break you off one million, it's fuck it, I'm taking you to court. That what you telling me? So now, so now we doing the. So now we doing what I don't. I'm not gonna get on the race thing, but now we doing what we have to deal uh, with. In the oh. court. No, 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 no. But I'm gonna say this. This is so now we doing what we do when we uh, go to the corporate world. They underpay you, knowing that you uh, deserve more, and you just supposed to accept it because after all, you could be out here being a, a what they call it a, 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 a janitor engineer or whatever the a custodian engineer. After all, you would be at a fucking what's the big plant out there in Dallas. Uh, you would be at uh Walmart return center. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You cannot That's... change up you cannot change up on your day ones. Like but my phone here. cut off as soon as I said that. As soon as I said that, Mama Oya cut my <laughs> service up, bro. As soon as I said, Oh, the phone got off. I'm like, oh no, nah, trick. Come on, brother. Now I mean look, I, so I miss what you said. What'd you say? No, nah, like I get what you said. I was just saying, like. Bro, I was like the corporate. When we go to the corporate role, uh, world, we always being told that we should be thankful for the fact that you even got the opportunity to be in the vicinity, regardless of your skills, your abilities, your knowledge. So here we go practicing the same thing that we have to deal with when we go to the corporate world. That's why we was friends. Well, that's not why we was friends, but one of the things that came with our friendship is that I should. This shouldn't have to be business minded. This shouldn't have to be what well, nigga. You already know what the fuck going on, Shadi. Like I had took this. Like it shouldn't be that, bro. I'm just it saying. Shouldn't. I'm just saying this, bro. I'm just saying. If if you fought, bro, and I trained you, and I was supposed to take home two point five, I would be happy with you give me two uh two two thousand. Huh? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred. Bro, you tripping? No, nah, just bro. Make, I'm talking about me, bro. I'm not a greedy per- so bro. A 90, if your if so your fake most percent uh pay cut. A ninety percent uh pay cut. Yeah, I do bro, that, bro. Bro, bro, look, bro. If, if if look, bro, this no, bro. Stop it, stop it. I would feel for uh for, uh as a human being, I would feel uh flaudulent doing something like that, bro. Bro, at stop the most, it. At the most, I might come to you like, look, bro. Oh, uh, goddamn, you know. The medical bills I got put that 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 five hundred k that I was supposed that, to bro that man just had cataract surgery bro bro that's that's at the most you still getting two you getting two no matter what I would be like look that five hundred that five hundred k bro like I got fucking around pay like bro but hold up hold up bro if if what the fighters are saying about the about the sanctioning fees because they were involved right yeah then 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 that twenty five million it, it become ten million now bro. So no, so he no, what no hell no it, no because he had three belts so that's nine percent right no nah, I did I did everything I did no 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 I'm doing everything I'm doing everything I'm doing thirty three and a third I'm doing everybody's cut because because he said fighters leave with forty percent of their purse forty percent trainer cut not uh, that's what I'm saying why is you not prioritizing your trainer cut in that before like if you are gonna have a base pay after you pay everybody. Yo, day one nigga should be in there, no questions asked. Man, hold up. Look, look, at, look at my face. Look at my eye. I got to go home and see my children like this. Man. They're going to look at me and say, ooh, daddy, what? Bro, this is crazy, bro. So you think Earl Spence took this ass whooping and still got to worry about Derek yeah. Jack? Bro, you if you took an ass whooping like this, I would be concerned about you. Oh, okay, look. How, 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 how did it go from, um, I'm cut from a cloth where if we had a excuse, we wouldn't even get it. So now you bro, but then he gave an excuse. Future. That bro, that man, that right after that, that man talked about retina surgery. So we ain't gonna talk about what that man said, bro. Right mm-hmm. after he did that shit, that man was like, "Yeah, I wonder why I couldn't see them." Punches. So we just let it, uh, 
uh, we just let Arrow freestyle now. We just letting this nigga come up here and just uh. Bro, that man has been through a lot. The man was thrown from a car at 100 miles per hour, bro. And then went in there and got and ran into another fucking Honda Civic and Bud, bro. So 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 bro, we got to we got to we got to consider the fact that it might not he might not be working with a full deck, but let's be all the way real about it, bro. He might be drinking again. Who knows, bro? I just look at it like Derrick James, if he was really the father figure that he claims that he was, bro, like L Spence basically been doing what the fuck he want to do, bro. You remember how he said he, he used to come in the camp, fat camp, because he was drinking and doing partying, and he would have to lose weight. Multiple camps, and Derek James just let him do whatever the fuck he wants, but he's supposed oh, to be the father figure, bro. Oh, hold on, bro. No, no, no. Spence got a father. It ain't no father. Like, you, he grew up in the two-parent home. So, like, here we go, bro. Look, man. Oh, he, so he, now he, you try, you, no, now no, you hit him with no, the, no. this guy's a gangster. His real <laughs> name, Clarence. <laughs> nah, nah, bro. Bro, all I'm saying is this, bro. The man was 33 years old, brother. He he he, he had a, a devastating car accident, uh, a tragic accident that should have switched. Man, I mean, look, bro. He's the problem. If You know how certain things happen in life? Like some people get shot. Some people get stabbed. Some people uh, almost get uh, kidnapped. And they and then that'd be the light bulb for them to be like, you know what, bro? I'm gonna go ahead and change things about my life. He gets in the car accident and still continues to drink, still continues to party, still continue uh to go on uh Instagram and make baby sounds, Google guy guy, and all this shit. And you won't like bro, no, bro, he's a kennel bro, Derrick James have nothing to do. If you look at Derrick James, he's a Buddhist. He's very disciplined. Well, then why, um, bro? So, so why you paint him? But you pay on one candlestick. You gonna paint him as this dude, like, 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 like that. That's a father, father figure type. Where he he did this I for spins. That. No, that's what Errol Spence was do. I don't, I don't, I don't paint him as a father figure. I just he just been there since he was a kid. That's my only argument. He's been there since a kid. But even even your own father can't control you once you get to a certain age. That's why a lot of guys get kicked out at 18, 19, 20, because you don't want to you don't want to follow your father's rules. Brother, 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 brother. Good. 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 How you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? How you doing? Look, brother, when we we don't gotta use that tone against the other brother, man. Okay. Brother, brother. No, I'm just speaking with passion. No, no. This, this is passion brother, because brother. Oh, we we do this shit. We do look, it too look, much, bro. Look, brother. Save that tone for the white man. Look, 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 look. Somebody got Jerry's me. number. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, bro, I mean, is this how y'all getting down in Texas, brother? That's that's my main question. Like, bro, y'all, he from Louisiana. What the fuck you talking about? He's he Jamaican, bro. bro. What the fuck, bro? What you talking? Nah, he from he from um he from Texas. Nah, so this hell so this, no. this, this that a man from this in Texas to switch up. On nah, he Jamaican. 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 Now nah, he from Riverdale in Atlanta, bro. He's from uh, Jamaica, Queens, bro. That's where he's from. Nah, bro. He's not from. I think he's from Long Island, bro. Jerk chicken, bro. He said that's his favorite. No, he was from like Staten, no, like Staten Island or Long Island, one of them. So this how y'all do. So this how y'all do each other. Hold on, hold on. He said, he said, Errol Spence said in an interview years ago that he never wanted to train with Derrick James from the beginning, and his dad talked him into training with him. Errol. Said his dad paid him also. No, but he didn't want to train like boxing in general. That man wanted to play football. Yeah, his father forced him into that shit because he was hanging around yeah. the wrong crowd. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to play football. He didn't give a fuck about boxing. He just boxed. That's why he never lived the fighter's lifestyle because he never really gave a fuck about fighting. He just did it. Cause, oh, fuck. He just did it because it was bread, bro. So, so, hey, Gus, as a fighter, Gus, as a fighter who's going to have 40% of your check getting fucked up and beat up before it gets to your hands, bro, how do you feel about this? If I trained you, Gus, and you got to big fights and you brought me other big fighters and you got to a fight and you said, look, man, look, I know standard is 10% for trainers, bro, but I'm a, I, instead of giving you 2.5 of this $25 million, I'm going to give you 250000 Nah, bro, I'm going to give you 10%, bro. Bags, bro. Y'all crazy, Bags. bro. Nah, bro. Cause, cause, look, the, I mean, what, what's, I mean, the trainer is doing something, bro. If anyone deserves a cut of the paycheck, whether it's the fucking manager, the, the promoter, it's the fucking trainer. 
it's, that's the only other person that really deserves a part of the paycheck, bro. What? Yeah. Bro, the trainer don't be doing shit, bro. He throws a towel over his shoulder. He gets you a game plan, but you don't necessarily have to follow it. If if you, as long as you win, he's gonna get full credit. When you lose, he's gonna be executed, bro. That's really the life and yeah, job exactly. of the trainer. When he when he loses, he's the fault man. So what? So, so that, look, so look, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Gus. Whenever he was in camp with Bud, Derek James also had Anthony Joshua at the time, bro. Then he also had Ryan Garcia at the time and Jermel Charlo, bro, because he hadn't lost to, uh, had he lost to him yet? No, nah, he didn't lose to him till later, right? Yeah, yeah, he lost later. So he had, he, he had other responsibilities and he only had those fighters because of fucking, uh, L Spence, bro. So it's like if you're bringing me big, bro. There's nobody bigger in the sport of boxing than Anthony Joshua, bro. That's why the Saudis keep building arenas and breaking bags on that man, bro. He brought that guy to Derrick James, bro. So it's like, nah, bro. I can't. I can't okay. look. Okay, let's take this scenario. Not cut you off, brother. My apologies. Let's say he got all these new fighters, right? And let's say these new fighters is holding their end of the obligation of win or lose or draw. They still paying him 10%. So what they say about a nigga that you knew from way back when, we supposed you supposed to be standing on more principle than them because we, we know each other longer. We more closer. So if they not taking if they not taking a, a scapegoat route, why are you when when we grew together? We built this together. So 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 what, let, let, let me let me let me ask you this: Is we doing hypotheticals, bro? And this whole thing is hypothetical. Like I said, they could just make up. I mean, that, we've seen that shit happen on YouTube before, right? You think uh, it's a Dick, Wayne and baby situation where like people shouldn't. Be it might be that, yeah, 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 exactly. If they sticking their head in it, bro, they they should be really careful about where they pledge their allegiance because when they make up, they gonna remember what everybody said, bro. So yeah, they absolutely <laughs> should. They should they should tread with caution. So that's why I said this whole thing could be hypothetical. But I know Derek James has other people in the camp with him. You remember Jamel Charlo had that dude, I can't remember his name, Joel something. Was it Joel? But he's like a he's like a supposed to be like an expert body uh body uh a body shot dude. He's supposed to help you with that. And he's like really, really known. And uh he brought that guy in there. He has a team and he said in the interview, I have a team, you know what I mean? And we 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 close and blah blah blah. Like so what if Derek James is okay with it, but the team is is not okay with it, bro. How would you feel about that? You know? on, what you mean? You mean the team ain't okay with what? The team tell them like, nah, go get our ten percent. There it is, Jewel Santana. They... So the team is saying go get our ten. What you mean? What you mean? I'm giving you a hypothetical. So, <laughs> what if Derek James is okay with it because he got you know what I mean he got the other payday. He got Ryan Garcia payday coming up, but the team like like Santana saying, hey, nah, go get our ten percent, homie. See, nah, then that's when I revert back to Holyfield. Nigga, you just came in here to uh, touch up on some things, you know, to to uh, improve some things. But you you can't, you can't. See, that's what I'm saying. The foundation never should compromise itself for, like, an outsider. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, you should, like, somebody that's just coming in for six weeks shouldn't speak on what's happening between me and the main trainer. That's what I'm trying to say. So, like, if Derek just changed, Then once again, the person that been there the longest, the one that got the biggest bun, like his word is bun. Like if he's cool with not getting ten percent, you shouldn't be cool with getting ten percent. It's just based off that relationship. That's what I'm saying. So if you got another fighter that like five percent, hey, that's cool. I'm not mad at it. It's just like if you're if the, if the standard is ten percent, and he just want to keep you to that standard, well, I don't see the foul play. You said you would take a 90% cut pay? That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Like, you, bro, you got a family, bro. You got a mouse to feed. When your daughter graduates high school and she can't get that uh, new Honda Civic she want or the G-Wagon or whatever it is that she want, it's going to be because you tried to watch out for another nigga. Another you Damn, can't Rodney. be doing that. Rob G, you set me up, Rob G. Rob G said Joel Santana was. Man, well, why would you do that, Rob G? I thought you was on Google, man, looking at it. It ain't. It's um, uh, his name is actually uh, Guzman. That's it. It's Guzman. 
Joe Joanne Guzman like to be an information statement uh, station, bro. I would have. I would have just ran with that shit. I thought you you looked it up. He said L. He said L did not bring. Uh, Karma said L did not bring AJ to Derrick James. AJ team reached out to him, but why did they reach out to him? So you telling me that Derrick James would have won Trainer of the Year without Errol Spence? The only reason they was considering Derrick James for Trainer of the Year is because Errol Spence' performance against Ugas, and because he folded okay. Ugas up like a fucking lawn chair. That's why they was like, oh, yeah, Derrick James a beast, and then Jamel Charlo. Got with him and knocked uh fucking what you call it out in the rematch for undisputed, and that's when they was like, okay, all right, yeah, this guy's the okay. truth. Okay, so Derrick James went in trainer of the year. When has uh, Spence won fighter of the year? So it's obvious. It's obvious that Derrick James. Bro, if you don't fucking stop, bro. Defense, bro, it's bro, if you don't fucking stop, bro. Crazy. Oh, first off, bro, you know T.O. Senior won Trainer of the Year, bro. I just, I just found that out the other day, and that that just kills the whole award, bro, as a whole, bro. Like, if I had that trophy, I would just go throw it in the trash. That's <laughs> that's, that, that's neither here nor there, bro. But Anthony Joshua does not pick up that phone and reach out to Derrick James if Errol Spence doesn't look as as impressive as he looked in his fights. The fighters came to bro. It's the same thing with Canelo. Everybody was going to Eddie Reynoso when Canelo was looking good. When Canelo got the beats put on him by Bivol, everybody jumped shift and left the camp, bro. There's nobody left but Canelo. Even Andy Ruiz was like, "Give me my Snickers, get my Twix, let's get the <laughs> fuck up out of here." <laughs> yeah, there's nobody left, bro. It's like when your fighter looks really impressive, they credit the trainer for it, so everybody will run to the training camp. And that's all that, that happened with Derrick James, bro. Everybody came over there because of uh, uh, because of Errol Spence, bro. Anthony Joshua would have not have went over there with Derrick James if it wasn't for Errol Spence. But this is my thing. An insider shouldn't start parroting what outsiders think or say, bro. That's the whole thing. Like, how strong is y'all foundation if all it takes is one loss for you to start talking like an outsider? Did you just quote 50 Cent? How deep is that bond if that's all it takes for you to be gone? If you don't motherfucking <laughs> stop, bro. Look, look, bro. Uh, bro, that's a perfect song to sum it up, bro. That's the perfect quote. Like, if somebody say I was cheating, you see, whatever the fuck he said, right? Yeah, bro, there we go. You summed it up, bro. If that's all it takes, one loss for you to start questioning things, you start looking <laughs> at niggas 50. sideways. <laughs> Uh, she said 50 that. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I'm telling you, bro. There we go. You sounded it, bro. You you just made my case, bro. If, if, if that's all it takes for you to be gone, brother, how deep was I? How, how deep was I bun, really, bro? Would nah, you just bro. At me bro, like, what you talking about? So, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Object- hold on, bro. First off, we don't even know if we're going to ever see Errol Spence in the ring again, bro. That's something you gotta take into account. Also, if El Spence never get in the ring again, would you say it? Would you, if he never fights again, ever, ever, like never gets mm-hmm. in the ring again, would you say it was okay for him to try to try to like renegotiate that purse or that split for Derrick James? Nah, no. So the last time you seen this man in the ring, bro, motherfucker had hamburger meat on his face, bro. <laughs> and you would, and you still would be like, yeah, shit, hey, and that man is much. Because you got to remember, Derrick James' career is going to last after his. Mm. Uh, you still got to pay your, you still got to pay, you still got to pay the fam at least two mil, bro. That's, that's my thing. This is what I say. If it's 25, you at least got to pay him two mil, bro. At least. That's at minimum. And then you can negotiate from there. But you got to pay, bro. like, bro, come on, bro. Like, I don't get what you said. So you saying that if this man gets back in the ring, bro, I mean, never gets back in the ring, that the 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 movement, the moves that he making for his family, bro. Because remember, this man got a ranch. This man got, I mean, shit, he's spending money, bro. So, so Derrick James, like I said, his career, trainers, Trainers last longer than fighters, bro. There's, I mean, there's no doubt about that, right? You wouldn't argue that. Trainers last longer. Promoters last long. They they have the longevity in the sport. Fighters' careers are equivalent to Lions. You know, Lions' prime is probably like eight years. But if they were, if if promoters and fucking um, 
promoters and fucking um trainers had to be compared to anything it would be vultures bro because vultures get to live the like 60s and 70s bro so so what i'm saying is yeah he might be taking a little pay cut and he might be angry about it but if he really fuck with Earl spence like that bro and this might possibly be his last fight because i don't think he gonna get back in the ring again that's just me personally uh would you, i said would you change your mind you said no bro that's crazy okay so the company you work for on your last week they tell you look Nigga, we took you in when you didn't have a job. We down there, pull, uh, you, to be honest with you, your, your drug test was in pre, uh, pre, uh, preliminary. We still fuck with you. We ain't even send it off to the lab. Uh, uh, nigga, uh, we had to uh, retrain you on the forklift. You was tearing up all kind of shit, hitting poles, bitting shit, uh, getting product. So for all that, when we account for all that on your last check, we gonna need 90% of that. They do that. What rock- the fuck are you talking about? Like so, you gonna like that? Away? They literally do that, bro. <laughs> they literally do that. They be like, nigga, you didn't turn in them uniforms. Give me seventy <laughs> percent. No, bro. That, People I like, damn, them uniforms ain't cost two thousand dollars. I never had a situation where, like, bro, and bro, I ain't up here saying I'm the best worker in the world. You know what I'm saying? But I've never had a situation where, on my last check, they 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 they, they fucked over my money. Nah, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. It's like, bro, it get to like that's almost a business mindset. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't have a business mindset with my day ones, bro. That's what niggas that we don't know. I think Derek James has the business mindset. He like, um, you gonna pay me what you owe me, regardless. As you should. It's that's what. That's the business mindset. Nah, but bro, but bro, but bro. That's standing bro, on your word. Bro, Derek there. James, Derek James deserves deserves 10%, bro. Explain why, bro, because his head shines, you can see it from far away. Nah, bro, because Derek James been there since day one, bro. So if any trainer deserves that whole 10% is fucking Derek James, bro. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I really don't believe trainers deserve no fucking 10%, bro. Oh my God, bro. But what about the other percent? What what so what's the other percentages? 33 and a third. For who? Manager. Okay, and that's fucking garbage, bro. So. Oh, I, bro, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to say, cuz. By like 15%, 20. What you saying? What you saying is is the is the the manager's uh, dick is bigger and he's fucking the fighter longer. <laughs> what I'm saying is they need to renegotiate all that shit. I don't think a trainer deserves 10, percent and a manager definitely don't deserve 33 and a third, bro. They charge yeah. it for like towels and shit. So. I think that's the whole, the whole thing is built off boxing with mob control. And that's when you know fighters are getting fucked. When saying is when fighters were getting fucked, it was a times, bro. That's easy, bro. It's a boxing rule. Sound like a Decepticon, don't um, hijack your phone, brother. Hello. Mm-hmm. That that like like Donito Donaire, Timothy Bradley, they make their wives their managers so that they can pay them the 33 and the third and it goes back to the same house. It's a smart strategy, but um, like I said, bro, if you know you're in a business where that's ruled by the rats and it's dog eat dog, bro, like look out for me, especially when I left the fight, bro, and my face was looking like this, bro. Bro, that man was healed up and like, bro. Man, that dude ain't been his spirit, bro. He got scars that never gonna heal, bro. He got his ass beat. You remember the like when he like, oh, are you doing like that? Anybody that say some shit like that, bro, they are damaged internally, bro. Are we forgetting Derry James had this man uh, after the after that ass whooping? Derry James had his arms around him and kissed that man on his head, uh, on his forehead. So this nigga is supposed to get a two point five million dollar kiss. No, bro. I can take you to Vegas and show you the most baddest bitches. In- well, they ain't got no bad bitches in Vegas. Let me stop. But I can show you some prostitutes. I guarantee you won't find me no $2.5 million kiss in Vegas, bro, where prostitution is legal. But you cannot. 
make equivalent equivalency to prostitutes to Derrick James being there since he was fourteen. This man is what thirty three. Bro, you the one talking about the two point five million dollar kids. Bro, that's like eighteen years, right? Eighteen, nineteen years. He don't know this man, bro. That's basically like I don't want to say his son, but that's damn near like you understand me. And you and you, so your father. So this is what you gonna do. So basically, you agree with these football players. That Wait, they, hold up. You said he wasn't a father figure. Now you finna make him a father no, figure. No, Go no, ahead, he's bro. Not a fa- I, no, 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 no. I'm just saying he don't been there long enough where he can low key call that man. Be like, I helped raise that nigga. You know what I'm saying? So like, you telling me that you agree with these football players that go out here, they stand uh. there. You know, uh, like like uh, Charleston White said, it be the stepdads that really be training them niggas up, right? So like the stepdad come in at seven years old, train them all the way up, and maybe maybe for whatever reason, once he make it pro, you know, they may split. Like once he was in college or whatever, now you feel like you don't owe your stepdad nothing. But he was the one playing for all the little league uh, shit. He was. Buying you all the equipment, like I don't, I don't, I don't see how like you can switch up on somebody. Damn, right there, that's bro. funny, bro. Just I was just watching the, like, I was watching the short on that shit where it was like, why, why single guys like don't ever want to, don't ever want to get into Hello? relationships with. Can you hear me? Now there. Yeah, we can hear you. I think it's you got to hit the refresh button. Me or, or like that? Like that. What you mean refresh? It ain't a refresh. You gotta refresh this shit, bro. He said ain't a refresh button. We can hear you now, bro. Nah, bro. Bro, I don't, I don't know, bro. Bro, I got a text. I got a text from Lil Wayne, and he told he told me to tell uh, DJ who put this shit together. Meet as who? Meet as who? Bro, you can't be doing Aero Spins like that, bro. That's. That, I mean, you can't do Derrick James like that. Like I said, I agree with Aero Spins. Doing you more like Ugly Duckling. Mm. Nah, they treating this man wrong, bro. This man ain't, bro. Y'all ain't got no little sympathy for this uh, ass whooping this man took in front of the world, bro. That shit was hard to watch, bro. And I and I've I've watched surgery on YouTube when I was bored. So I thought Derek James, can y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. I thought Derek. I, I'm just saying, bro. When I said when I said like that, that that I would take a pay cut, bro. You was like, that is absurd. I was That's like 90% pay cut, bro. That's crazy. Bro, because you looking at percentage, bro. I bro, I look at it like people have the wrong mindset when it comes to business, bro. 10% of a grape is less than 1% of a watermelon, bro. So you looking at you you focus on percentages, bro. I don't care nothing about no fucking percentages, bro. I just look at it like it's a good payday, bro. And and I didn't take any other punches, bro. And then his game plan failed, bro. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, uh Allen, uh Iverson. So 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 so, so what if so look, so so look, so look, what if we go, what if we go, what if we go to his corner highlights? Do you feel like if that was that six week camp that Derrick James joined him in because he was really busy because he had all those that that star studded stable that Errol Spence brought him with his with his celebrity? Do you think that he worked with him for six weeks, bro? Came up with a game plan that got his ass whooped, and he deserves two point five. Yes or no question? Oh okay. yeah, bro, you done lost your fucking mind, yeah. bro. He came up, bro. That was the Errol agreed with the plan. He said, I'm he might well, and since he doing that, he might. How do you know he agreed with it, bro? He was saying it on interviews. I'm gonna come out stepping. I'm a, um just gonna be a one sided ass. Do we did we forget when he was nah? Like, but he nah, he entrusted he entrusted Derrick James to come up with that whack ass plan, bro. Bro, no, bro, it wasn't whack when he beat Ugas. It wasn't bad uh whack when he beat uh Sean Porter. It wasn't whack when he beat uh fucking uh uh both of the guard uh Danny Garcia and um. What's the other uh Garcia? But that's just it. Derek James also said that Errol Spence sometimes comes up with the game plans. So what if so 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 I mean that leaves it up to interpretation, bro. But like what if what if the Ugas fight was him? Because I remember he said he was watching Marvin Hagler before the fight and he fought exactly like that. He jumped right on Ugas and beat the shit out of him, bro. Okay. Let's say you're right. 
Let's say you're right, but let's take let's take the other spin. Terrence Crawford had so much confidence in his comrades and his team and his group that Shakur told him, "Come out, um, come out, uh, softball." We don't hear him complaining about the fact that he came out softball. Like you just gotta trust your team and you make the adjustments. Like we wanna we wanna blame Derrick James because. Errol Spence don't know how to make adjustments in the ring. Adjustments come from the corner also, buddy. That ain't just that ain't just trainers, bro. Bro, hold on, bro. If we go back to the live right after the fight, not like when you did one like two days or three days after the fight, mm-hmm. you was out here saying that Derry James was telling him some right things to do, but Errol yeah, he did. wasn't doing them. He did, bro. So, bro, that's what I'm saying. So, he bro. still got his ass whipped. It don't matter. Fuck. Bro, I don't know why you're making a case for this man, bro. Like, look, I don't even look, I don't even particularly like Errol Spence's character outside the ring. I think Errol Spence is stupid, bro. Like I said, his new name is Errol Spence, bro. Like an error, Errol Spence, bro. <laughs> so, so, yeah. but but in this case, bro, I, I can see where he's coming from, bro. Only because I've I've seen the dark side of boxing, bro, and his his managers, promoters, and trainers, bro. They all be in cahoots. That's how that that's how that. That's how that, that came to be, them standard percentages, bro, because they always like, we're going to get together and fuck these fighters. Like, the fight, like if they cared about the fighters so much, bro, why did they agree up on the 10%, bro? But, like, look. Bro, 10% ain't, that ain't crazy, bro. Bro, 10% of fucking, 10% of 25 million is, is ridiculous, bro. For six weeks of work for a game plan that failed, that's crazy, uh, bro. Ah, bro, that's greedy, bro. That's greedy. Yeah. You gotta give up that ten percent, bro. That ain't nothing. I think it's greedy, but I I think it's greedy on Derek uh, on Derek James' behalf, bro. Gus, if I came up with a game plan and I failed, see the the, the thing the problem be this, bro. Say people can say what they want about Teddy Atlas, bro. There's never ever been a lot a lot today a person that cares about their fighters as much as Teddy Atlas, bro. Go look at when when Timothy Bradley got beat by Manny Pacquiao. He was all sad and depressed. Teddy Atlas don't care about the money, bro. He says we'll work the money out later, bro. He he he's not he's already rich. Number one, he had a good job at broadcasting, so that helps with the ease the pain of the money. But uh, he cares about his fighters more than, than 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 the money, bro. And he knows the history of the sport because Custom Auto made sure that. So say what you want about Teddy, bro. I feel like Teddy has the right mindset, bro. bro. Like. Oh my God! And then Teddy would be the dude when you go look back at um, the money he got. He was really getting fifteen percent. Like, come on, bro! No, God he's not getting no fucking fifteen percent, bro. Stop! Don't know how to rid shit up, bro. Derrick James just want his ten percent. Bro, Teddy Atlas don't even train that many fighters. What are you talking about? Fighters go to Teddy Allen. He don't go to them, bro. He's a broadcaster. Now he's a podcaster, but no, nah, that's not his job, bro. But what I'm trying to tell you, bro, is. He has the right mindset, bro, when it comes to this shit, bro. I feel like 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 Custom Auto is another one, bro, that wasn't overly greedy when it comes to purse splits and all the other stuff. I feel like you you think it's greed on 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 Errol Spence's behalf. I think it's greed on you gotta remember that fight was sanctioned, bro, by all the belts. Okay. They paid taxes on that fight, bro. Somebody collect 33 and a third of that 25 million, bro. Okay. Just so, saying, bro. Okay, he had three belts, right? At the end of the fight, Terrence Crawford had four. So why Terrence Crawford ain't uh, making these arguments with his uh, trainer? Terrence Crawford didn't coach. get the tip beat out of the, bro. That he, Errol Spence look, he almost looked worse than the car wreck photos, bro. Oh no, he definitely looked worse than. The, uh, as far as as fighting going goes, bro, this was hard to watch because he he just had like this red blood that was up under the skin, like you know how people like 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 get sunburned and shit. And he was like, nose was dripping. He got knocked down the second round. He like he was on skate. It was it was awful and hard to watch, bro. Like even though I I picked Bud going in, it was still hard to watch. I knew he would knock him out. Still hard to watch, bro. It looked like it just looked like a helpless, like a train versus a pillow, bro. Or like a, letting the lion loose inside of a, a chicken coop or some shit, bro. It was it was awful, bro. It looked like someone but, had a train ran on this. <laughs> Can't outrun a good trade, bro. Is that but, what it uh, like? Nah, nah, it's nasty. But now, nah, uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, with that being said, bro, I just look at it like he should care. Derek James should care about his fighters, no, bro. When he said, like, yeah, you know, you can't really look into the past. You can't get forward looking into the past. He basically was saying, like, like, bro, 
You didn't you didn't hear the arrogance in his voice with that statement, bro. You thought that shit was cool. You thought nah, would you always say like that? Arrogance. You thought that was some player shit, bro? No, nah, that wasn't arrogance, bro. That was wisdom. That wasn't bro. arrogance. See, wisdom that was wisdom. spoke with authority. See, bro, he's trying mean? to tell he's trying to tell the youngin. But he's not a youngin to, for me, but in Derrick James uh age bracket, he was trying to tell the youngin. Brother, you dwelling on this shit. You trying to make cause you don't cause you don't know the conversation. That is not what he said, bro. Hold on, hold on. Let's let me give you context. That's what he said, bro. Yeah, man, a lot of fans, you know, everybody loves EJ, man. Everybody like, you know, we haven't really heard from him since the you know, the loss with Crawford. Um as far as media is concerned and all of that right. shit. Like, you know what? When you speak to him, like, where, where is his mind at, or what's you know, what's the energy with? with I mean, right I already, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on my other guys, so I'm really not. I haven't. I, I talked to him like maybe three weeks ago, or whatever. But it's like, and we talked like for Frank and you know, mm -hmm. Tank or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you just got focus on like, everybody. You can't look back. Except for, that's the issue. Everybody keeps looking back, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't look, you can't move forward and looking back. You're gonna bump into everything that's in front of you. Yeah. So I think that you know that's. I mean, I, I you know. He, Mentally, I guess he's okay. You know? yeah. Do you do you feel like? Because only I feel like only the fighters and the trainers know when somebody still got it. Like I don't mean got it necessarily physically, but mentally that he still want to keep going in the sport because he's accomplished I think a that, lot. I think that I think that you know um, you know everybody should have won it. Ray Leonard should have won it at least to won it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that I think that I believe that sounds like arrogance to me, bro. Nah, bro, that, bro, because you're not privy of the conversations they haven't. So Earl may be the loop, like, like, like the interviewer said, um, like the interviewer said, bro, we haven't heard for Earl, right? So it's obvious Earl probably not acting himself right now. And Derrick James is seeing that and giving him words of wisdom, like, because Earl is at the age, bro, where people not going to. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not going to do too much. They're just going to tell you, like, hey, bro, you shouldn't do that now. I'm telling you now. You go, you go up over there on that other side of town, I'm telling you, it ain't going to be good for you, brother. And they just going to leave it at that. They're not going to do too much. They're not going to be over, like, trying to uh, do uh, interventions and all that shit. They're just going to tell you, like, hey, bro, if I was you, I would pick my head up and move on. What else he supposed to say? What would you say? Like, like kiss him on the forehead for, for that two point five million that he earned for that million dollar <laughs> he kiss. He already did that. He already did that, brother. So, uh, he has yeah, some interesting things. So, so one of the things I thought was pretty interesting that he talked about Frank Martin, and he said Frank Martin was really coachable. I, I thought he was when he said two guys that <laughs> that 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 are like coachable. I knew Anthony Joshua would be one of them. I've already stated that on this channel before. That's one of his superpowers as a fighter is he's very coachable. He's going to live and die on the game plan. It's hard to find a fighter like that. They'll either tell you that they know better than you because they're accomplished and they're making more money. It's hard to get somebody to listen on that level. So Anthony Joshua was extremely coachable, which is why I suggest he, was, he should go to Teddy Atlas or Ben Davidson was a good fit also. But uh, <laughs> Derek James, bro, saying that he's working with other fighters to me was like basically like 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 but like he's moving on bro like that's old news type shit and i'm like bro the only reason ryan garcia is in your stable bro is because because fucking the work that fucking errol spence put in i could like i don't know bro i feel like if you feel like derrick james is just low you gotta also feel like that uh, I mean, uh, Errol Spence is being disloyal. You got to also feel like Derrick James is being disloyal, bro. It takes two, bro. It's never really one person. So so he, he's supposed to be the uh, motherfucker that keep coming back to the uh, to the spouse that keep whooping his ass, right? So because I'm whooping <laughs> your ass. Fuck? No, no, I'm like, that's no, because that's how the uh, abuser try to uh, paint it to the victim. So I'm beating your ass and you want to leave me, right? Is that what you're saying? Because I put my hands on you, you want to leave me. So that's what that's what you, that's the argument you're making for Earl. Like you're making an argument where the victim now got a reason with like the fuck. No, bro, no, 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 sir. Bro, you what gotta the pay. fuck? You don't want to batter the women? Nah, look, look bro, bat, like that's what it is. Because you're trying to paint the bit like you're trying to make the victim have this unrealistic like. 
loyalty, bro. Like, what you mean? Like, if you don't pay me my money, bro, like, we, we got to get an understanding of, like, what's going on, brother? What's going on here? I think Derrick James in the right, bro. I don't think he's doing anything disloyal. He said he spoke to him three weeks ago, and I'm sure he he, he no. He, he said had, two three. He said two three months ago. I thought he said weeks ago. No, he said no, I think he said week. I think he said weeks too. Yeah, no, he, yeah, said, he said months. Go, no, he no, said weeks. Not nah, Gus. Gus. No, nah, I'm up here. You you bro. up here. You up here with Almighty. Bro. No, I'm just playing, but uh, Gus. No, nah, he definitely said two or three weeks ago. No, nah, he said months, bro. I swear to God. Bro, he said two or three weeks ago. Like, I got, I got, I got like a, a photograph of memory. Errol Spence bro. has been the. I could, I could, I could play it again. Bro. I could play it again. I, I'm pretty sure he said weeks. I don't think he said months. Because I would have caught that. But let's, I mean, let's listen to it again. Hold on. Yeah, man, a lot of fans, you know, everybody love EJ, man. Everybody, like, you know, we haven't really heard from him since the, you know, the loss with Crawford, um, as far as media is concerned and all of that yeah. shit. Like, you know what, uh, when you speak to him, like, we, where is his mind at? Or what's, you know, what's the energy with, with EJ? I mean, I don't really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on my other guys, so I'm really not, I haven't, I, I talked to him like maybe three weeks ago or whatever, but it's like, and we talk like for Frank. What do you say? Yeah, three weeks. Oh, okay. I thought it was, I was like, like, that's what I'm saying, man. So, I'm, see, I'm privy to some information you ain't privy to, guys. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> you got an insider, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm a die, but nah, bro. I can't believe you're making this argument, bro. Why? I mean, just looking at your character and the things that you done done. You gotta remember, I was around these wolves, bro. I asked. I, I was. I was aspiring to be a fighter, bro. I didn't think mm. it was right then that they was fucking and robbing fighters, bro. Like thirty three uh, and a third. Nah, that's you just start doing that's math. You like, bro. So I'm finna go in this ring and take brain damage and take forty percent of my purse because they always that. make these, these elaborate fucking paydays that like seem like they're really fucking like just oh my god, like this guy should shut up. He's making fifty million. It's like, bro, that's what they reported that they're making. They're taking home 40% of their own money of 50 million. They've got, if a Canelo has got to the point where he should, he could demand or make 50 million. Same thing with Floyd Mayweather. They're only taking 40% of that home. The reason why people like Al Heyman is because Al Heyman will let you make your own promotional company. And he wasn't greedy like that, bro. He wasn't just hands in your pockets and shit. That's why Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Ehrman and them, those guys sued him, bro. With the with the Muhammad Ali Act, mm. the business of boxing is fucked, bro. But that don't mean the train. Like, I, if anything need to be re re uh, re uh, renegotiated is the uh, sanctioning bodies and the managers. But trainer definitely deserves ten percent, bro. No, they don't. So what if everybody got think? renegotiated and everybody's percentages went down drastically, you think the trainer should stay at ten? Yes, bro. Like, well, okay, wait, wait, okay. What happens when the trainers start giving you five percent, uh, five percent, uh, training, uh, training regiments? Bro, the trainer is doing his job, and he's not taking no punches. And his his life shelf of training will be well longer than the fighter's career, bro. That doesn't. And then we have trainers. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You think if Brian Norman Cena start working my corner that he deserves ten percent? No, because you nope. would be already well, established. Yeah, yeah, body. because but th that's your fault for picking Brian Norman Senior as your coach. Some f bro, not every fighter picks their trainer. Sometimes, bro, the, the whole the whole reason we got here is because of a loyalty conversation, right? Yeah, everyone the only reason course, Derek bro. James is in his corner, the only reason Brian Norman Jr. is in their corner is because of loyalty, because they started with them at a young age. And now that they're older, they're still stuck with them. Anthony Joshua did that before he had a long conversation with his trainer in the UK of leaving him. Can't remember that guy's name. I always forget that guy's name for some reason. McCracken. Bro, but they're not stuck with Rob, him. yep, Rob McCracken. Yes, they're not stuck with him, bro. You don't have a choice. They're not putting a gun to your head saying, you got to stay with me. No, they're That's staying the with them due to loyalty. The same well, thing that you're claiming that they bro. don't have. That's not loyalty. That's, that's, that's just making a bad fucking decision. 
if some guys, if you're not getting what you need out of a certain trainer and you feel like you can't leave them because of loyalty, that's, that's a personal problem, bro. You need, you need to man up and be able to fucking leave that person, bro. Okay, you say yeah, a bad decision. No, I say it's a bad decision to pay them 10%. Dude, so no, the same way you can leave them and choose to leave them is the same way you should choose to yeah, not pay their ass yeah, 10% bro, because they didn't the, the, the they didn't do $2.5 million well, dollars worth of work. Quote you always, uh, say. I'm not telling you my quote to no. use against me. It's like, it's like, bro, if they actually, if, if the trainer... They, the oh, quote bro. was, scholars always right. Why even bother to argue? You always say. I just told you, scholar's always right. Uh -huh. If he tell you a duck could pull a fucking truck, shut yeah, up and hook him up. Yeah, we can hear you. You missing the hey, forest for the trees? Gus, can you hear me? You, you, no, I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. I can, we, we can hear you. You got to hit that refresh. Nah, bro. It's, it's like, if, if that trainer, like, like let's sound train with Brian over senior, and, like, I figured out he can't teach me shit, but I'm going to be... I'm gonna be cool with him, like I'm gonna still care about him, like loyalty. But if he actually cares about me, like he's gonna understand that I need to move on to a better situation. That's that's loyalty, bro. Can you, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can, can you hear us? Hear yeah, we can hear you. Let me put in a private chat. But yeah, bro, okay. So, bro, so I think you're arguing the opposite thing. I think that the loyalty comes from the fighters. That's why Adrian. We've seen this with Adrian Broner and Mike Stafford. Adrian Broner had moved on from Mike Stafford. He felt like he couldn't teach him anything. He was taking a couple losses, so he moved on from Mike Stafford, right? But he still kept Mike Stafford around. Mike Stafford's presence was, was still known into the camp because fighters have more loyalty than you think. I think Hello? that. Hello? I think that trainers should have. Yeah, we can hear you, bro. Okay. Trainers should have more loyalty, bro, and take pay cut. I don't know what's wrong with a trainer taking a pay cut. No, sir. I think that's you greed, take, bro. Bro, you didn't take bro, no, why, why the fuck? You didn't take a pay bro. cut in your fucking. And, and, and nothing changed because it you got percent. your ass whooped. What changed? So, so, so what y'all tell me? So what y'all telling me is y'all think Derrick James did two point five million dollars worth of work. Look yeah. how far he got for a six-week camp a, with a game no, plan no. that didn't work, mm -hmm. and then he kissed him on the forehead at the end of the fight, bro. No, no, that's literally like a, what, no, bro. No. That's literally a prostitute shit, bro. With a nineteen, with a nineteen-year, uh, not eighteen-plus-year uh, relationship of them working together, and 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 then look at all the things that Derrick James did when this motherfucker was being undisciplined. He's been undisciplined almost his whole. And Derrick Derrick James did nothing but condone it. No, he didn't. How you know that? He so, we, so look. If it's a personal decision, if it's a personal decision for a fighter to leave a trainer, then it, is it also a personal decision for a trainer to stay with a fighter and not leave them? Because yeah, when Earl Spence is getting drunk and coming in the camp and doing fat camps, he wasn't able to teach them game plans according to Earl Spence. Derek James never said shit. No, 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 no. What's the point no. of that? I mean, he still has to make his money, bro. Yeah, he's like, bro, so, oh, so, so, no, so no, look, no, so no, look, no, why do we have to be considerate of Derrick James making his money, but we don't have to be considerate of Errol Spence paying the money, we bro? Are, why, we are considerate, bro. What's it's the consideration? What consider Derrick James did not do $2.5 million worth of work. Brother, how you going to start putting an estimate? So now, so you, so now you out here telling people that uh, they shouldn't be selling their course at this price. It's the free market, brother. We, we sit down. We it ain't the free market if you can't negotiate off off the ten percent is standard. You, you can, you got to do it before the fight, though. Nah, nah, nah. That's standard, bro. It's standard. Bro, you can't. Bro, standard means that's what that's what's expected. But then negotiation come in, and you can start. You can get more than the standard, or you can get less depending on how you negotiate. We all don't see jobs that uh, really start off with twenty five dollars. But if you come in there and you don't really know what you're talking about, they'll start making up prices for your ass. So you want this motherfucker to live like there you want Derrick James to live like Coach Calvin, bro? Coach Come Calvin, on, bro. He, he don't he don't get paid, bro. He said on, he has bro. to ask Tank for money. Come on, bro. Whatever you want him out here like bro. Coach Calvin? So so look, so look, stop cutting out. So look, no since we brought up since we brought up Coach Calvin. Uh let's compare. Let's compare since that's the analogy that y'all want to use, right? Coach Calvin works with Tank, right? 
Yeah. Ain't no other fighters went to Coach Calvin because of how awesome Tank looked. Matter of fact, Tank might have the up, most lost up. rounds out of any elite up. fighter up until the knockout. Y'all can't hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. What'd you say after Coach Calvin? What'd you say, like, uh, he's the only trainer that he's worked with, or what'd you say? I said Coach Calvin. Ain't nobody going to Coach Calvin's gym because of how spectacular Tank looked. As a matter of fact, Tank might have the most lost rounds out of any elite fighter. Mm -hmm. Right? But because of how spectacular Errol Spence looked, other fighters came to go train with him. Nah, I, I, think, you, I think you forgot about Better Be, bro. Okay, now we got that fact, right? Then we got the fact that... Um, then we got the fact that he done made him, he bought the biggest star, heavyweights is a whole nother business, right? The biggest star in the heavyweight division and Anthony Joshua to him. Then he bought Ryan Garcia, who uh, is also a star to him. So he got, he brought those two paydays to him. And he's also been paying them all the way through. So you comparing Coach Calvin and begging for money to, he done made him the superstar trainers. Uh, he, he even got him trainer of the year award, bro, based off his performance. And you comparing the two guys. No, false bro, equivalent, Gus, bro. No, Cut it out. No, no, that ain't a false. Gus is making a great argument. He's showing if you leave it up to the fighter discretion, bro, the trainer going to get fucked, bro. Because the fighter going to feel like the manager. It's the opposite. The fighters Coach get Calvin, fucked. Bro, the Co Coach Calvin is still living in the projects in Baltimore, bro. Do you know a bridge just fell down in Baltimore, bro? <laughs> bro, bro, bro this man, Coach Calvin, is living in the Are Baltimore you aware that a bridge just fell down? A Baltimore, bridge just Baltimore, gave up and said, bro. fuck it, in, in Baltimore, bro. Are you aware of that? You want, you want me to tell you how I know Coach Calvin ain't eating good, bro? This man was on Bro, the a fucking bridge no. fell down in, in Baltimore, bro. Exactly, Why bro. you keep ignoring exactly. that? Man, bro, Tank is leaving his ass Coach, in Baltimore, bro. Tank is leaving his ass in Baltimore. You Coach Calvin ain't eating good, bro. This, this Negro said, Devin Haney ain't ready to fight Tank because he ain't walked past no dead body. If you get paid, you not thinking about no dumb ass <laughs> shit like that. But because he's still living them projects, because he's still uh, right next to the- Bro, did we forget that the, the, the apartments that Tank bought? Was burned down, bro. After taking no, days out, no, no, bro, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put, we gotta put context here, bro, about what we did with. Even more argument. Why is this man getting hit, uh, 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 hand fed? If you in a city that is notorious for criminality, bro, you should watch out, watch out for him even more off of that. It ain't like he from Henderson, Nevada, or some uh suburb where you know, uh, you can get you a little nice place for a thousand dollars and you steal Gucci. Come on, brother. Brother, it's no hey, way, brother. brother. Like, bro, Tank is the perfect example why you do not leave it up to the fighter discretion. Because, like you just saying, they gonna start thinking. You remember that episode where you was like, well, hold on, hold on. How like, many, Yee! how many, how many broke trainers in the sport of boxing compared to broke fighters? I'm sure it's way more trainers. You don't lost your fucking mind, Gus. Tell him. Hold on, bro. Cause the trainer getting the less of well. No, well, it's fighters, yeah, bro. They can it's get fighters, 10, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause they can have ten fighters. But look, it doesn't matter, bro. L look, look. This, this is what matters, bro. You leave it to a fighter discretion, and they not build on on that authentic shit and, and cut from a certain cloth, bro. They gonna fuck over their trainer, bro. It's almost like a rapper versus a producer. If you leave right. it up to the rapper to pay the producer the right amount that they should uh, get. Uh, it's not gonna happen. That's why you start seeing a lot of producers, producers getting songwriting credits to make sure that they get their money. So that's why a lot of times on them tracks, you will see the producer as a songwriter. Because hey. if you leave it to the discretion of uh, the person that's supposedly doing all the work, they already they're gonna always overestimate their own work, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, scholar. I'm sorry. Nah, nah, nah. And, and a lot of those hit songs, bro, what would they be without the producer, bro? That's... Bro, what what, what would... Uh, what was that damn song? Slow Down by Bobby D would be... Where would, Bert, where would, where would Lil Wayne be without, without Baby? I don't know. No, Baby's not a producer. He's like a... He's a, a promoter and a manager, bro. But baby put all those fucking great producers on Lil Wayne music. That's why Lil Wayne music fell off after Baby left him. Damn. 
don't know about that. Okay, so that, that makes the argument for the producer. But I still fly. Because Beats is a big a big part of of the sonic pleasure that people get when they listen to music. So why why what so 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 why wouldn't they get they right they just do, brother? That's all I'm saying, bro. It's the same argument that we making, bro. And I believe producers should be paid what they need to be paid. I think producers get like um depending on the record, like I think it I think it's like fifty percent, like twenty five or fifty percent, depending on how like I'd make a case that little Wayne little Wayne is the equivalent of Errol Spence because they had the one out there putting the work in, bro. They deserve a majority of their money, but they but but, but they get fucked left and right. But Derrick James isn't in the position of a promoter where he Derrick James him. has Errol. Ryan Garcia because of Errol Spence. And he had AJ, but he let AJ slip through the cracks because he, he overextended himself with Jamel Charlo, all of those guys. So because he overextended himself, he's in a position that he in. But Errol Spence brought the fuck he, he led him to the water, bro. He can't make him drink. But the but the mere fact that y'all are making a case for a trainer, put ten years on Errol Spence's career, he's retired, bro. Put ten years on Errol, uh, Derek James, he still will be a viable, good trainer with the accolade of Trainer of the Year award that Errol Spence helped him win. Got to stop this shit. Bro, I'm gonna, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go train with Derek James, bro, and I'm gonna give him, uh, I'm gonna give him ten percent of my hundred dollar paycheck, bro. Bro, yeah, yeah, I want you to go cherry, uh, train with Derek James and tell. They gonna give it back and say I want twenty. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say, nah, 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 brother, you gotta, you gotta leave that in the past, bro. What's in the past, bro? What the that fuck? Why is it like a, why is it like a fucking shooting star, bro? Why is it like a meteor? The aliens are coming, bro. I just seen a big ass meteor, bro. You always got some crazy shit to say. Bro, I swear to God, bro, it's right in front of my fucking eyes. There's no aliens coming on no fucking meteor, bro. bro. You think they coming to take <laughs> us up on the mother shit, bro? It's a fucking meteor, bro. Like, yeah, bro. Elon, hey, bro. They're, they're coming here because we got the Tesla factory, bro. Elon Musk. Hey, guys, I'm about to have to get my clinical uh, test kit on you, brother. Nah, bro. They strapped, yeah, I think, they strapped I me think down, so, too, bro. bro. They made me watch aliens uh, have sex, bro. I, I didn't want to say it, Gus, but I'm gonna have to get that clinical test kit out on you, brother. Nah, bro. Nah, bro, because I don't. They're trying to test me before my amateur fight, bro. They're trying to do a mental health evaluation. Ah, them, them, men, ah, that, them shits be fake, bro. Have you been depressed in the last uh, few weeks? Have you had mood swings? <laughs> like, bro, that's all that shit. <laughs> Bro, mental illness is fake, bro. Good, stop, stop yeah. while you're ahead, bro. Everyone's, everyone's mentally ill, bro. Be straight up on. It's not in the bio, brother. Do you have a, uh, do you have a uh, learning disability? Because it's only eight letters, my brother. D R U M A R dot TV. Why does that have to be in the bio, my brother? Do you have a learning disability? A written expression disability? A listening comprehension disability. It's only eight letters, my brother. D R U M A R dot TV. I don't understand. You could put www dot in front of it, my brother. But if you need me to text you D R U M A R dot TV, you don't need no videos, my brother. You need an IEP. You don't need no videos, my brother. You need a special ed evaluation. I need my test kit for you, my brother. If you can't write down eight letters, my brother, you got bigger problems than consciousness, my brother. You need a special ed evaluation, my brother. Talk to me, Africans. Like that. Yeah. Talk to me, like Africans. Talk yeah. to me, Africans. What you say? Uh, well, what's the what's the seventh day, bro? Seventh day of what? Of the week. What's the seventh day of the week? Uh, it's supposed to be Saturday. That's facts. Sunday. What the fuck are y'all talking about, brother? It's 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 nation. It's, the seventh uh, day of the week is is Saturday, bro. Saturday. Now, if you talking about business wise, bro, Sunday. how do you get? So hold on, hold on, hold on. 
How do you get your motherfucking paycheck with that with that seven day being on a Saturday? Y'all always be like, do you know the letter J bro. didn't exist in the Hebrew? Oh. Man, I don't give a damn about none of that shit, bro. Y'all bro. always be bringing up some ancient no, facts that don't mean no, no, nothing. No. Most companies, most company first day uh pay period start on Sunday and it ends on Saturday. Most companies run like that. Hey, bro. You stay worried about your money, bro. <laughs> We're gonna worry about the real shit. Yeah, we were worried about the rules. What you mean? This whole conversation was about Mont Derek James money. Nah, but that's all for shits and giggles, bro. I don't really, I don't really give a fuck about that, bro. Yo, Gus, Gus is the fucking booted, bro. Hold on, you. What you mean you don't care, Gus? Money just come to me, bro. I don't give a fuck about money. Cause you young. Ah. Uh, Get you a kid. Get you a kid. I guarantee you're gonna think about money bro. differently, bro. That's that's how they get you, bro. That's how they get you, bro. You need to get out of that money. Who is bro. they? Oh, there you go with the Deuce Time. Dude, I knew Deuce Time Spear was on this panel somewhere. Nah, bro. You gotta. Who is they, bro? If you quit worrying about money, bro. It's gonna come to you, bro. You just money is like motherfuckers make millions of dollars off of greeting cards, bro. Like you can make money off of anything. Bro, that's the craziest logic in the world. So that means right now, if I just stop worrying about money, it's just going to fall in my lap. He's going to knock on the door and be like, hey, Amazon no, delivery. No. Got some money here. I'm not telling you quit working hard, bro. I'm telling you quit being afraid of money, bro. Afraid of money? What the fuck? Guess you, money, guess you high. Nah, bro. I'm talking about afraid of money as in like, like, like you're always worried about not having enough or like that's what I'm talking about, bro. Like hmm. not having enough, not being able to pay your bills this month or whatever. You want me to tell you, you something? That, you God can't let that told me. To you, See, I stopped worrying about a wife, and God sent me my wife. Nah, see, like that's what Ryan Garcia. You, you told, that's you what, told, you told God, I uh, thank you, but next time make it two. I know that's all you had, but next time make it two us. He <laughs> nah, bro. God, I stopped worrying about a wife. And I fasted and I prayed. Oh and my God, God sent me that wife. So hold That's on, hold on, hold on. Before we before we get into the tangent, because I can already see this shit slipping. I see this shit slipping into another conversation. Let me finish up with the Derek James shit. So Derek James also has some interesting things to say about Frank Martin. And uh uh he talked about Frank Martin and uh Tank Davis, and he has something to say about the new fighters. Check him out. You know, I think that everybody that's Floyd's thing, right? Yeah. I think that that's his thing. Mm. I mean I'm I'm in my era, we wasn't really copying nobody like that. Yeah, like doing it. Like you would see somebody like, okay, I can dance one game, but this, this, this. I'm not gonna try to replicate it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, see, that's what. Okay. But what you see, like, let's break down the fight, like, because Dev, obviously, you know, one of the best jabs in the sport. He got footwork. I think he's yeah. really good at long, really yeah. great at long range. Mid range is good. Yeah. But I don't think he fight inside too yeah. much. But when you breaking it down to you, like your boxing brain, um, what kind of things do you see you could take advantage of with somebody like that? Well, I think every 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 one of the new little young fighters all kind of fight the same. Mm. In a sense, so it's like other than Tank, right? Everybody, all these guys try to have a long range game. If you watch them, I mean, Shakur fight kind of like that long range game. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, I mean, not just those yeah, two yeah. guys. Right. I mean, so a lot of those guys, they, they, they fight very similar. Right? Yeah. And I think that um, they all use something that they saw somebody do and they like it. So they try to stick to that or whatever. Yeah. I think that Tank has the ability to, well, we're not even talking about Tank. Yeah, we said Devin. But we say what you was going to say about Tank, though. Tank has the ability to be a boxer. Yeah. And a puncher and a banger right. Right, at the same time. But but Devin is a good boxer, man. He's like very he he's very educated with his jab and he's able to create all these aspects of boxing. So for me I just have to not let him be himself. Mm. Right? I mean, you know, because if you let someone be themselves, you know the time of their lives on you. For sure. That's what happened to me. Right. I mean, but when you but when you but when you um, let them be themselves, I mean, you know, hey, it's like it's a different situation. Yeah. Do you as a coach, do you have preferences as far as the fights that come up, like who you want them to fight? So yeah, he said the young fighters fight like Floyd Mayweather or something. I, I I felt like he was right. I said I took us this all the time. Shakur fight like Floyd. Everybody's still in that Floyd style. What very rarely do you see people implement their own stuff. Like everybody even fights at that pace, try to slow the, the fight pace down. But that ain't real fight, bro. Unless people agree to it, and the fighting has slipped so much that people agree to fight you at that pace. So yeah, I, I agree with what Derek James said, man. The fighting has slipped, uh, and everybody fights the same.
Y'all there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just. Um... Go ahead, T. I know you have something to add. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pittsburgh T. Man, that's why. I, this is exactly why you can't do do business with niggas right here, man. Niggas don't want to pay, man. Niggas do not want to pay, man. That's why I don't have no problem. I love me some Negroes. I hate niggas, man. Love the white man and I, have, I like Negroes. I hate niggas, man. Niggas don't want to pay, man. Especially when they always trying to pocket wise, man. I, I don't get it. We agree to something. Hey, man. If we agree to. Shit go, but that sounds like some shit that apply here, man. I ain't no genius. Shit you agreed to it. And, and I got to be sympathetic about your family, but fuck my family. I don't need to eat, I guess, man. Shit. To be to be fair, I don't think Jerry James got kids. What? Why? He too ugly to have kids. <laughs> bro, come on, bro. Let, let, bro. Well, he, he gets eight percent. They said that he negotiated with his wife to have kids, but he wanted a ten percent split. Yeah. That's why the wife did. That's why she never had kids with him, bro. Come on, bro. Now you're making a joke out of this man. Money? Like, come on, bro. I got to agree with Pittsburgh T, man. Like, it's just something with us, bro. We, we just, you know, and I ain't going to get on the race thing, but, it, bro, that shit weird, bro. We, we, we just got to end. Nah, bro. I, you got to keep it. You got to keep it true with your day ones, bro. So what about when Floyd didn't want to pay Jake Paul? Nigga, they ain't this day one. No, nah, I'm saying they fought, and he said, basically, you don't understand how this business is. You get Facts. your money on the back end. Facts. Facts, bro. I agree with that. Like, so what if L. Spence making his trade away to get his money on the back end, bro? Nah, bro, nah. You can't You can't do your day ones like that. That's 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 what I'm saying, bro. We don't – see, people always say Floyd ain't this and he ain't pro-black this, but – when you really look at how he practiced and how he treated a lot of those uh, non-black fighters, bro, he treated them like bums, bro. Uh, and, and 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 he treated the team well. He treated some of his team, uh, but for the most part, he treated uh, his. Bro, I see, team. I see Nate, I see Nate Jones up there was like, man, I remember when Floyd fought Pacquiao. What happened to Pitt, he gave right? me sixty. He gave me sixty thousand dollars. I'm like sixty thousand. What? Bro, he, he wasn't no tag along. He had been with him since the Olympic days. He was the guy that you see in the 24-7 holding the shield, taking the body punches, coming up with strategies. You Y'all think Derrick James is underpaid? That motherfucker got paid 60000 Yeah, I got I got a whole uh, Floyd feet to the fire on that one. But, like, look, and, bro, that could be a situation where that dude, that dude, was too uh had showed too much gratitude, bro. He was probably one of them dudes, man. Like, you know, he just showed too much gratitude and, and got taken for granted, you know. And that's on that nigga, right? So, but, but <laughs> overall, bro, you should pay your day ones, bro, handsomely. I mean, handsomely, with no questions asked, bro. I can't. Damn. Somebody adopted uh Pittsburgh T. I think I think them people I think them people that you was talking about that you said you didn't like, bro, they came to pay you a visit, brother. You can't be out here just talking crazy on every black person, brother. Oh, he said you mean Logan, yeah, that's what I meant. He said free Larry Hoover. What the fuck? He said Floyd is is pro Floyd facts. He said the funny thing is if you ever seen Derrick James fight, he fights exactly like Errol Spence. That is true. I did see him get knocked out in the fight. He had knocked at the guy down and was winning. He said, don't speak ill of me, Tudor. Come get some come get some uh, lessons, ill. I mean, uh, ill. Deuce. Come, man, come get some lessons, fight. Deuce. I'm ready to fight, bro. I'm ready to go train with Derrick James, Spar Ryan Garcia, and Frank Martin. All that's gonna happen is Derek James gonna take fifty percent of your purse. And you changing up on your day ones. That's crazy. Man, this shit this it ain't even so much him changing up on his day ones. I like I said, I think is I think is his day ones changing up on him, bro. He wouldn't have oh. all the million dollars if so 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 hold on. Would you say Errol Spence have definitely paid him a million dollars over the course of the fights, bro? Well over I a million. I, I don't know, brother. Nah, real shit. I'm arguing with you, Scarlet, but you know what uh Manuel Stewart said? What he said, a coach is on. I mean, uh, what are the horse? 
riders call jockeys. The 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 guys who ride the horses for money. He said a jockey is only as good as his horse. Meaning like a coach is only as good as his fighter is. Like yeah. yeah, I know. Errol, we wouldn't be talking about Derrick James if it wasn't for no fucking Errol Spence. I like that. I'm arguing the other way around. We wouldn't know who Errol Spence was. He was there. He tricked Errol Spence's mama into having sex with his daddy. Like, no, nah, bro, cut it out. Cut it out, bro. That man That man was a beast, bro. That man, We wouldn't know about Errol Spence whether he was with Derrick James or not. Now, what we know about Derrick James, probably not, bro. Probably not. The reason why we know about him is because Errol Spence's performances, bro. And Errol Spence looking like like a like a beast whenever he, before Bud he got there with Bud, but like shit he was looking like the guy, bro. That's why people. The only reason we thought that fight was a 50-50 fight was because of Errol Spence's performances. Like, so you think people thought it was a fifty fifty fight because of Derrick James? No, people thought it was a fifty fifty fight because they didn't really know, bro. I picked Bud by annihilation. I can't remember that. Oh, you trolling Sir Senior. I just put a I just put up I put a picture up today and tagged Sir Senior in it and asked Sir Senior to pull up and give his expertise as he used that what what he say his IQ was 145. I wanted him to use it today. And that 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 picture got one fucking comment, bro. The moment you ask people about some real boxing, hey, analyze this, they, they don't show up, bro. They just show up to argue and disagree with you, bro. That that picture had one fucking comment on it, bro. One. But you two like full that. of experts. That's crazy. Like that broke it down. Yeah, I know. I know precise breakdown, bro. This is what I take. <laughs> like that, where you can start boxing again, bro. Oh, uh, once I move back, um, once I move back to the city, <laughs> yeah, once I move back to the city, you know, um, bro, I could have really, I could have, I could have. Uh, Kenny Porter, man, look, man, you got to understand, player. I got right back on that phone afterwards. So it's, like I said, you know, it, it, it's a beautiful scene on all sides. But this is just the thing, though. Back to what I was saying. Once I get back to the city, you know, I probably stump down, you know, and, and, and make some uh, make some moves, man. But if I would have stuck with that shit, I didn't understand how good I had it, bro. I was only 21 in, in the gym, bro. I, if I would have took that shit seriously, bro. I probably, I probably be out there. With, it could have uh, been, it could have been you getting your ass whooped by instead of instead of Spence. <laughs> nah, bro, that ass whooping was already in in motion, bro. I I, I went to the gym 2018, bro. Nah, they had already bro. started. Um, man, that fight. They talked about that fight for fucking ages, that's bro. What I'm saying, like, that's when it started. Uh, the the end of 2000. You could have been David Avenesian. Bro, I wasn't gonna fight in that weight class, bro. They made Gus an offer one time. What was it, Gus? You were going to take that shit? The lowest weight class I probably would have fought in was uh, light heavyweight. You would have been food for better beef then. Nah, bro. I would, I, 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 bro, bro they, they were saying, bro, I had the ability to be a knockout artist, bro. Especially with them uh, body shots. Who is they? Is it the uh, same people that say that? No, no. Uh, no, Derrick James need his 10%. Now, nah, dead ass, like, I remember I was hitting the mix. And he was like, like, I thought he was gassing me up. He was like, oh, boy, boy, you got some power. I was like, all right. So then we started sparring. I ain't gonna lie, bro. The first time I ever sparred, bro, I got that ass whoop, boy. That shit was, that shit was tragic. But, you know, I, and then uh, we did it again. And I hit this motherfucker, like, I guess, what side of the body that was? The left side? And then he just dropped to the ground and stopped. But he was a, light, a smaller dude. But like, I think I think I, I think I could have did a little something, brother. I think I could have did a little something, brother. For real. For real. Uh, T, before you got cut off, bro. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying is, man. Uh, they pay everybody else, but when it comes to the black man, some kind of way we find some excuse not to pay each other, man. And we think that shit be cool to be talking about. No, I gotta look out for my family. Like I ain't got no damn family. Like shit be crazy, man. I ain't gonna lie, the money do get funny when it comes to split, but that's but that's everybody, bro. White people don't mean want to pay black people neither, bro. Nah, like that man, like he, said, each other. 
He said, he said, imagine you at your job and they say you don't deserve this because you did this, you did it this, and you damn it. I'm like, nigga, they do. They be like, the uniforms, you didn't return them, we go withhold your check. They do this shit. But it's in the clause when you sign up on that, that paperwork that you don't be paying attention to. That shit in there. It ain't like I just woke up one morning and decided to say, hey, fuck it. I just ain't going to pay your ass today. Nah, Pittsburgh T, it ain't, it ain't in there because the last company, they try to withhold it and I told them they better get my fucking money, bro. Well, not the last company. It was a long time ago. But they gave me my money, bro. But I still had the uniform. Nah, they just, they try to bluff you. Well, I, mean, I don't even think they can put that shit in the contract. It depends. I mean, technically they can't because for it depends on what's going on. It, it depends if you lease the equipment or you rented it or if it's yours. It's a lot of variance that go. For the most part, no, they can't. For the most part, because you're getting paid for compensated for for time work, and that's like state law, federal law, all that. So no, it's they be on some stupid shit, man. These jobs be petty as fuck. But I mean, uh, policy doesn't override federal uh, law, bro. No, it don't. No, hell no, it don't, bro. Can't handle. That, that's what I just said. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, I just said uh, uh, employee policy don't override uh, for, uh, federal law. Yeah, yeah, you can't handle policy to override the law. They don't work like that. Shit don't work. But I mean, they be trying it. But that's basically what we want. We want this dude to do to uh, this guy. Like, fuck it, I ain't win. I ain't paying your ass. Yeah, and I can't believe you co-signed that shit, Scholar. That's why we can't get in the play like oh, that. You see people, man, because cause I cause I would do it. I just told you I would do it, bro. I would take so a pay cut. If, you, if like that, if you went in there and got your ass total fuck up, bro, and you was like, look, <laughs> you was like, look, Scholar. I can't. You see that, brother? Yeah, kind of he said he'll take a pay cut. He said he'll take. Y'all hear me, Brian? He's talking. He's talking about a imaginal fantasy. There you go. We hear you now, Scott. Uh, I would, I would, uh, I would take a pay cut, bro. I would take a pay cut because if like, let's say, like I said, if I was training like that, and me and like that agreed up on it, bro. And look, as long as he not, he wasn't trying to get like. So he was, he was ten percent of twenty five million, two point five, bro. If like that, try to give me fifty thousand. Okay, bro. He go, we going to court, bro. But if he told me like a hundred thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand, bro, I would still be okay with that, bro. It was only six weeks worth of work, bro, for a fight plan that he lost, that he lost the, that he lost game plan that he lost with, and then all he did was kiss the fighter on the forehead. So like that, think the. Kiss that he gave him was worth two point no, five no, million dollars. No. <laughs> no, bro, I think he's speaking from a perspective of that money would be life changing to you right now. But once you start accumulating new bills, getting new interest and new uh, tape, brother, it always changed, bro. We 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 don't seen this like a million times. The person gets some settlement money or whatever the case may be. They telling everybody what they gonna do. Bro, I swear to God, bro. I'm going to get you a call once I get this settlement money. And then they get the money, and then they realize, oh, this shit ain't as much as I thought it was going to be. So, like, that's the, I'm sure Derrick James is at that point. Like, he don't have 200K uh, paycheck. And then you start really, like, realizing that money ain't as life-changing as you think. You know, definitely, definitely not what 2.5 million can do. Like, that's I mean, but he ain't sure enough. I mean, but he didn't sure nobody else. He didn't, he didn't sure the station body is. He ain't short enough. The tax man, he ain't short in PPC, but you want to short the trainer? Like, come on. You want to short your day one? And this ain't the trainer that just came, came out. The blue. Bro, this trainer been in his life for 17 plus years, bro. So 17 years and a kiss, bro. That, that's $2.5 million no, 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 worth no, of work. No. All, them, all them times he got them prepared in that fat, uh, fat camp. I mean, bro, uh, Errol Spence got a history of changing up on it, like uh, Blu-ray. Like, he got a history on, like, when stuff don't go the way he want, bro, he started, yeah, nigga, and I ain't have to, and I ain't have to get in no sun either. Like, he got a history of just, like, kind of, like, I don't know, bro, doing people that, that been there with him for a long time, once he don't get the result he want, like, start switching up on him a little bit, bro. And everybody start playing the uh, politically correct game because he's very loved in the city of Dallas. 
Uh, I mean, but let's keep it real. Keep Blu-ray is a trainer that is now fa- the most famous boxing trainer in boxing, bro. Like people be pulling up on Bo- on Blu-ray's channel. Yeah, Blu-ray. Tell us about uh, what Nicki Minaj's album is. What the fuck? This nigga's a <laughs> nigga's a trainer, bro. Nah, bro. They say he. They say, they bro, say, uh, in the words of in the words of Deontay Water, bro. never forget, never forget who brought you the big time boxing. <laughs> But look, yeah, his bro, brother's like, girlfriend. His brother's girlfriend. Hilarious. Girl, like, switching up, like, I don't know, bro. I don't like that shit. And maybe because I've been switched up so much in my own personal life, like, people switching up on me, that I just... So you already biased coming like, in, bro. You already got a vendetta to pick. No, no, so no, you already no, like, man, no, fuck L. Spence. You on some funny shit because no, people done switched up on you, bro. No, like no, that. Who no, taught no, you to hate no, yourself? Who hurt you, brother? No, 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 no. Who hurt you, brother? No, 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 no. That ain't true because I still agree with uh, Holyfield to a certain extent. Like, if somebody coming in later in your career, all right, yeah, y'all can negotiate that. But like a nah, he month, wasn't. A day, you see there, brother? But don't agree to it. My thing is don't agree to it. Like, if you felt like that, you should have felt like that before the fight. Don't tell me you're gonna do something. I can be like, hey man, you know, but it, but no matter what, Errol Spence still got paid. Win or lose, that's the most money Errol Spence ever got paid. No matter what, so it, it don't even matter. He still lost, but he still got paid. That's the most money he ever made. But so now you want the trainer to take the same money. So I don't know how true it is, but they said that somebody said in the comments earlier that Errol Spence don't and his trainer negotiate after every fight. What if this is just negotiations? What if this don't have anything to do with the standard ten? Would y'all still would y'all still uh, uh uh have the same viewpoint that y'all have? No, no, they negotiate after every fight. That's different. If they agreed to for him to pay him, and then he all of a sudden now he don't want to pay him, that's fucking wrong. You should pay him. Yeah. Like we agreed to yeah. like, going into something, and they said I'm gonna pay you X amount of money, and then halfway through we don't, we make money, but we don't make as much as we thought we was gonna make. And I'm like, nah, man, I can't. I just can't do that. Like, nah, but we agreed to it. Yeah, but you know, I don't want my kids to go homeless. Like, that ain't, that ain't right, man. That ain't right. That ain't right. You should not treat somebody that you. Yeah, that shit coming, no, man. You shouldn't have a bald head. Bro. But nah, man, I, I, I don't. Crazy, like. like, like, like that. When he was talking about Emmanuel Stewart. Mm hmm. Hey, we can't hear you, Scholar. You got to refresh it. Can't hear you. I had to move up. They were playing some music in the background. I don't want them to give me. But um, when Emmanuel Stewart was talking, right? I mean, when, when Holyfield was talking about Emmanuel Stewart, and he was saying, basically, I know how to box when I got to you. Meaning like this. Derek James may have taught L. Spence the correct way to throw the jab, but did he teach him anything new for the L. Spence fight? Not the L. Spence fight, the Bud fight. Answer is no, right? All he did was come up with a game plan that failed, put the mouthpiece in the water in his mouth. That ain't I mean, to me. That ain't too- well, I mean, Scott, if you, if, like, that'd be a equivalent of you being a, a pitcher and you only got a fastball and change up and you ain't got no new pitches. That's all you got. That's all you got. I mean, the trainer can't make you have no new skills that you ain't got either. That's the other part. Like, what, he can't make him be a switch hitter all of a sudden. Like, he working on what he got. Give me a sec. Yeah, Pittsburgh, too. But, bro, we definitely in the greens, bro. Um, a lot of times, I don't know what it is with us, bro, but we think once a result is not met, that we can start just changing rules, changing words, Changing uh, financial uh, amounts, and that's crazy. Uh, they don't do that white man at job like that. Nah, they don't do that. They don't do that. They 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 keep they they go over their word. They start trying to leave uh, tips and and uh, you know how they be doing. Well, they be what we're not gonna do is have any Elvis slander over here. 
They are them slander, and we're not going to slander the white man. They're not supposed yeah, to be the white, white man. Like like he's not deserving of it. Now, Derek James, on the other hand, he did, he had that shit coming. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see that? That's why we can't get reparations right there. See that like that? That's why we can't get reparations. <laughs> crazy, man. It's crazy. Like, we got to stop this, bro. I mean, I get with like, I, I see what, I see what Scholar trying to do. He trying, he trying to win the real nigga award of the year. But like, bro, at the end of the day, that ain't going to pay your bills, bro. No, I think y'all trying to win the, y'all like, that ain't loyal. He switched up. Well, he agreed to it. I think you supposed to, you agreed to something. You supposed to, your word's supposed to mean something. <laughs> so you tell me you. So if you ran the business, you're gonna be negotiating with your customers like, look, I know you're supposed to pay me a thousand dollars. Wait a minute, who a customer? Who a customer in this? I know you're supposed to pay me a thousand and fifteen dollars. But I take one hundred and five dollars. Like what like come on, brother. Like stop this shit. Who the customer? I was talking about if you had a business. Bro, that's like if you was a barber. You was one of the celebrity barbers where you got to pay $1,000 to cut. And then now all of a sudden, the guy's like, hey, man, I can't pay you 1000 no more. Uh, since I've been now from day one, I'm just giving the children to me for the 100 now. I've been giving you this money all the time, you know. Thanks, bro. You, you that's all I'm going to say. If that guy in the comment section was right, and he's saying that... They don't do 10%. They negotiate. If they go back to negotiate and he coming in with that loss and it's not a steady 10%, he can't get no 2.5, bro. I guarantee you that now. If it ain't in contract, he going to have to take him to court because he's not getting that. That kiss, he don't kiss that motherfucking good. Nah, bro. You put sweat, blood, and tears into this shit, bro. And, and for you to uh, 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 minimize... So hold on like that. If you... If you, if you one of the jurors in the civil case, bro. You're going to be like, man, get that man his money. Thanks. Thank God your ass don't do. Thank God your black ass don't do jury duty. That's why black people don't. I know black people don't do jury duty. Wait, wait. wait. This is what I say. This is what I say. I would have to see what's the uh, the intel on it because, you know, I went, I went never going there with a bias. But if the standard was 10 percent. Like, it, like, you're not going to convince me with a loss that now that it changes things, bro. But Spence that he didn't agree paid. on ten percent, according to that. Yeah, but Spence still got paid. I mean, but we can't believe that. I mean, it's, these are the same dudes that get their information at Seven Eleven next to the milk and the donuts. <laughs> like, we can't hardly believe these dudes, man. Like, we don't even know <laughs> these dudes just be banging up stuff, man. I mean, they seen the UF, the alien gave it to them next to the milk and gave them the information. I ain't been to the Seven Eleven since uh, Bluebird got caught by right. um, but. Like same dudes telling you that uh Terrence Crawford uh didn't make weight the first time he stepped on it. Like just like come on, bro. Like um I like I said, brother, like I said, I see what you're trying to do. I see you trying to have your victory lap, you know, win the real nigga award. Victory lap uh realest nigga of the award, bro. But nah, bro, you, you gotta pay fan money, bro. You gotta pay fan. Like I said, I would I would look if he came to me and say two million, I'd be like, you know what, bro. For the fact that you went out there and got your ass beat and all that, I ain't gonna trip but on it. Yeah, but, but it's percentages. Pay. Like y'all, but so wait, but wait, we stuck on the percentages. It's I mean on, on the actual number instead of percentages. If he been getting that same percentage the whole time, now all of a sudden you get more money. Now you start having the money. See how they work? I've been getting the same percentage the whole time. So now the pot go up. Now you telling me. Now my money get funny, but your money get right. Mine get funny, like man, come on now. Like we stuck on the two. Like if it's been the same percentage the whole time, that ain't right either. You got, but it's different though, Pittsburgh. See, because if I'm if my overall purse is fucking two five million, and I'm giving you ten percent of that, okay. But if I'm making fifty to twenty five million, not saying he made that, but I'm just saying the difference is. Then your pay is going to naturally go up, but that don't mean your your percentages stay the same. Like I said, ten percent of a great, ten percent of a so, great. 
is 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 not bigger than than one percent of a watermelon. So because you could pay me a little bit more than you could last time, and I should be see that's that be thankful, bro. That's that's what they did to uh Dave Chappelle, wasn't it? Like they had an agreement that you know they didn't think the show was gonna do that crazy good, and he had like a good percentage, and they told that nigga, look, bro, you are gonna take this fifty million or else. So no, that's, that's not what happened. I, that's not what happened. Not that's not, like, yeah, that's not. That's not. That's a different situation. Okay, like, okay, but whatever the case is, bro, like you gotta keep the same standard for your for 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 day one, bro. Well, I don't even know about the day one. I just know, bro. If you if you agree to a percentage, like the the number that that's the outcome is, is, is to me it's irrelevant because you agree to it. Like ain't nobody put your yeah. put no gun to your head and make you do it. Like whatever percentage it is, it is. Whatever you I get paid and you get paid, it's still a percentage. Like you can't say okay, you get ten percent, and then you figure out my ten percent is two million. And be like, oh, hey, wait a minute, oh, oh, whoa, oh, wait a minute here. Like no, that ain't how that goes. See, Scarlett think he's slick. See, he's trying to play the role of like, oh, I'm no. If I was in that position, I would have said less. Scarlett, what you really telling us? If you was on the flip side. You would be making that same argument that Arrow is making. That's the real problem. It, it, it I don't even think, think, bro. Have you not been listening? I said that. I started with that. I led with that. that no, nah, so bro, so so you saying if you had Gus on the channel and y'all agreed to a ten percent split and you start blowing up, if me and Gus, if me and Gus negotiate, I'm, I'm me and Gus. I pay bro, Gus a percentage, bro. and we negotiate. We negotiated after every episode what percentage I was going to pay him, and my numbers started increasing. And Gus wanted the uh, standard ten percent. Yeah, I would say Gus, you not. I would I would grade him based off his work, and if he wasn't doing ten oh, percent worth the work, oh, I'd be like, nah, bro, nah, nah, bro, hell, nah, bro. Because see, if you're my nah. trainer and I start getting big fights, I start getting like twenty five million dollar paydays. I'm gonna keep that shit ten percent, bro. And then you yeah. you you gonna look at your check and ain't gonna be shit left. I don't give a fuck. I'm not greedy. Hey, what happened? To, what happened? To, I'm not greedy. Yeah, what happened bro. This to, what bro, this is the craziest world? shit in the world. So look, so look, so y'all know Don King. Since we talking about these contracts, would make a motherfucker sign a blank contract. And Don King went to court right with Mike Tyson, and the the the, the judge them still ruled in favor of Mike Tyson because. <laughs> Don King a certain percentage, like he still was in the wrong. And Don King was charging him like <laughs> for expenses of a promoter, like ten thousand dollars for towels. So I mean, just because it's in black and white don't make it right. But but I'm just talking about charging you ten percent, charging the trainer, or not charging, paying the trainer ten percent. I'm not talking about no manager, towel fees, none of that. Like I said, bro, just because it's in black and white, bro, I mean don't make it right so so cool so you will make that 10 percent at the lower rate but once you start blowing up now you gotta start bro are you not good at math bro 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 okay do you get the analogy that 10 percent of a grape is less than one percent of a watermelon yeah that's what the trainer deserves bro percent. you don't get that like that a, a grape is more uh, nutritional. Uh, nutrition. Oh, this motherfucker Basically. one, bro. So, you missed the so, forest by, by trying to talk about nutrition. Mm -mm. That's the whole point. No, bro, he's saying is, he's saying that like one ten percent of one million is nothing compared to ten percent of like twenty million. Well, yeah, he's doing a little. Yeah, like, it shouldn't yeah, matter though. Like, he yeah, it, the it, exactly. He, he it don't matter. It's still like when. Um, he was with the uh, Nets. I mean, one percent of of a company that's three billion dollars. You gotta look like he doing that game. Yeah, but it don't matter. Yeah, why it gotta be a game? Why gotta be a game when it come to us, brother? Brother, it should matter though. But that's yeah, it should. If you agree to a percentage, it, you should just stick to the percentage no matter what. So we all go in business and we split down the business twenty five percent apiece. Your percentage don't change just because the company now is worth. A hundred million or a billion. I don't come back and say, "Hey, now you ain't got tw twenty-five no more. Now you got twelve because you know you'll be the show it up all the time." Like that ain't how that didn't work, man. If that's what you agreed to, 
I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Y'all know, y'all know. Fucking, uh, uh, this is like the argument that's made with fucking G Unit and shit. It's a whole lot of motherfuckers. G Unit, the people that was with Jay Z, a motherfuckers who overvalue what they actually were and what they meant to life, bro. And what I'm trying to tell you is, Derek James, yes, he's a good trainer, bro. He's a good trainer. But like Gus just said, bro, you're only as good as your fighter, bro. Kevin Rooney was considered the the he was beat. They were because Mike Tyson was so good. They were beating historical trainers, uh, Emmanuel Stewart trained fighter, uh, Angelo Dundee trained fighter. And they were talking about Kevin Rooney as being one of the greatest trainers of all time. I bullshit you not, bro. They were looking at him in that light, bro. And it's only because Mike Tyson was so awesome, bro. So I tell you this, Derek, we would not be talking about no motherfucking Derek James if it wasn't for Errol Spence, bro. What I'm saying is... You oh he switched up he switched up I think Derrick James switched up if you look at the biggest paydays that he's had it's been because of Errol Spence whether he cut him the check or brought Anthony Joshua to him to get the check and I just think bro me being who I am if I'm Derrick James I would be grateful with that bro if he wanted to negotiate I'd be like all right bro what you trying to give me I would counter off it don't got to be ten percent bro but the fact that 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 is they falling out over money to me is crazy bro the fact that that Errol Spence and Bud fight didn't happen for five years but they got the money right and these guys have been with each other longer than that and they can't get the money right bro is absurd to me I think Derrick James needs to humble himself and come to the table like, are you looking through the past you're doing this you're doing that and blah 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 like I said there's a chance that we don't ever see Errol Spence in the ring again that's a real possibility. Rightful, rightful. Nah, don't say that, don't say that, bro. Bro, well, you might not. Derek James might not get a fighter like him again either. So, like, they're both never know with either one of them. Both of them put sweat equity in there, and so you can't discount one without the other. You work with you negotiate, like that's that's what it is. Like some people get overvalued, some people get undervalued. Whatever you negotiate and y'all agree to, that's just what it is, man. Just like at our jobs, we go to we agree to work there for X amount of dollars. Or X amount a week or month. Don't nobody be running up on you. Be like, hey man, you sitting there for thirty seconds and you are doing shit. You owe me five dollars ninety nine cent. Like you need to give me that money back. Cause you just ain't worth it. Like we don't do that shit nowhere else. But when it comes to two brothers, niggas start becoming a master accountant. Uh, niggas want to see financial statements. Niggas like you get what I'm saying, bro. Like, come on, stop this shit, bro. Stop. So, um, y'all talk about, we're talking about switching up, bro, because of money, bro. I feel like, how y'all not see Derrick James switching up because of money, bro? Y'all ever seen that Dave Chappelle skit, bro, where he was talking about how people been treating him different because he made so much money, and he went to the barbershop, and he was like, how much for the cut? He was like, $50,000. He's like, come on, man, I ain't playing this shit with y'all today. That's what I feel like Derrick James doing. Bro, no, you're not, bro. Why are you going against the guy to get paid the least? Like everybody well, who they gets already the had a piece. standard. Yeah, but, but if everybody else gets it's a pie and everybody else getting this big old chunk, why are you running at the guy to get the little littlest piece of the pie? Why you pay everybody else happily and you like, well, brother, I mean, brother, brother, it ain't lit. it ain't really. I can't really do this for you. Can't can't do it. You, you know, can't, I pay everybody else, but I can't do it for you. His, 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 see, he feels as though his obligation to the man should be withheld but then we can start negotiating when it comes to one of us see then that's that's where a lot of problems that's that hookup that's that hookup that's that hookup like that that's yeah, that yeah, yeah. hookup brother up shit that, that's how that's what that is hookup brother up like that that's what that is you can't do look that out for him, brother look out for me the, yeah 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 you can't do that bro so y'all don't think this is him saying all right man you uh, uh, hey i'm gonna go park your car but like, all right man how much here's five dollars five dollars five thousand no, bro, because it's a no, standard they agree within to that business. It's like yeah, he didn't not, surprise him on them. Yeah, it's a standard that is withheld in that business. So Earl, the one that's at the brand new, he the one out here saying no new friends, no friends, no, no, no. But hey, but look, you brought up a good point with Blu-ray, bro. But we 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 can't ignore the fact that Blu-ray is now more popular than he would have ever been in his entire life, oh bro. Oh my god, bro. So that's a false statement. And we can't deny that. Uh, is that a Spence false Spence statement? Yes or no, bro? Let me, let me, let me. Cannot deny, and we can't deny Errol Smith's conditioning and training haven't been the same since he left from Brew. Like, why is it? Bro, stop. Stop. Bro, bro. Those are LDBC talking points, bro. Yeah, bro, it, bro, stop. Stop that. Okay. Because he could have, hey, he could have ran the marathon. I make an argument and say the, the best I ever seen him was when in the Ugas fight when he went and got that other dude. The white man, bro. Let's be honest. Okay. 
Okay. Hey, he could have ran a new race on. We forgetting yeah. Sean Porter, uh, Errol Spence, right? Huh? But okay. 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 Sean Porter, what? That's Sean Porter, Errol Spence. We forgetting that Errol Spence, though, but okay. Bro, the stop watching these channels, the bro. They giving you false narrative. Bro, bro, I'm not, bro. That's the bro. That's just me uh watching the fights and seeing what. See, he bro, he play. has, he's with bro. Porter, he was doing he fat camps Porter. with um with with Blu Ray, bro. I seen Blu Ray on a, on a on a channel. They was like, like basically, like, what is your secret? And he was like, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, bro. These dudes, bro, the, the dudes that stick out on strength and conditioning are the dudes that give steroids. They the steroid put, put, uh peddlers, bro. It's like what could, bro. You know the same anatomy that everybody that took a, a kinesiology class took. Why the fuck do you stand out so much? What are you doing differently? Victor Conte was snack. They breathe in oxygen. So you mean to tell me I can't go buy an oxygen machine and, no, and, and duplicate what you're doing? It's, di it's different, bro. Like some people just know they, they just know certain people body types and they know the yeah, different yeah. uh combination of things that they need to do to get them at their tip top performance like bro it's it's, it's it's like with anything bro you can see one kid at one high school like average then he go to another high school bro this nigga start beasting because the training programs are two different things bro that's the real thing. Training programs can bring out two, like a whole different, like that, a whole different ability. Like that. You like know what? You know like, what else? Like, I like it. Steroids. Good old fashioned steroids. Yeah, okay. not, right, not, not, not professional like that. that. If y'all want to say that, hey, I'm fine with that, brother. I'm, I look, I'm fine with that. I mean, not unless you go on the 7-Eleven again the next to the dairy and meat and cheese, next to the alien that's helping you uh, give you all Chico's. I mean, if you're going over there again, it's an there, then I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, I, I just Yo. I just cannot accept that that pay cut shit, bro. From Listen, like one. I said, I, I I I don't I don't agree with y'all talking point. I just see both sides. And like I said, I just know that the fighters get it taken advantage of, and they get their brain they get their they money took and their brain shook, as Joe Frazier would say, bro. So that's why I'm I'm over here uh, making an argument for the fighter, bro. But uh um. I better go ahead and end this live, bro. We're gonna be back tonight. I'm gonna do a late night uh live. Uh Pittsburgh T, I heard I heard what you said. We think alike, bro. We think alike. I was gonna do the Diddy shit, bro. And you said something, you said something that 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 just spoke volumes, bro. I was just talking with my wife about this, bro. Uh we watched I watched a Nickelodeon documentary. And on there they was talking, it was the dude from Drake and uh Josh. And I was like, damn, why they not treating him like they treated our kid? Like, like, you know, our our I mean, why they not treating him? Yeah, like they treated R. Kelly or Bill Cosby or one of these guys. I'm like, God damn, like what the fuck? Yeah, that's we gotta do that one tonight. It's too many things that's that's wrong. And I'm here in Miami. And mind you, they they ran on his property on Star Island. That's an island. So it's only one way in and out of there. So ask yourself, how the fuck did the media get in there to take the film to, to know that the location that they was raiding the house? How they get there that quick with a helicopter? Cassie, you see Cassie, how that works? Diddy, I just want to talk. Diddy, I just want to talk to you. He's like, all right, come on in. Yeah, see how that work? And why Homeland? They got FBI in Miami. Why the fuck the FBI ain't running down? Bro, there's so much shit wrong with that stuff, man. It's not even funny, man. That thing stink, stink like I don't know what, man. But it's just like this thing with uh Air Spence, man. People love black people love to see other black people go down, man. It's that poor mindset, man. Sad situation, man. Really sad. It don't make no sense. And we don't even know what he getting charged with. That's the other thing. It's so much rumorville going on. We don't even know what that guy getting charged with, man. No idea. But it, it, it would have to be linked to terrorism if, if it's homeland, right? Should be. Man, I I'm just saying, damn, you made a good ass point. It was crazy because I was going, but we don't just that. I'm talking about Diddy tonight. We're going to talk about non boxing. Yeah, yeah. But let, let me give Joseph get an exclusive. Go ahead, Joe. Right. Well, look, I don't know if you guys already spoke about this. I know the whole genesis of the program in the, initially was the Errol Spence Derek James split. Do you guys have any, any, have any idea why? Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to tell you. This tells me that Errol Spence is going to retire. He's not going to fight anymore because I don't know any trainer that would want to work with him after he stiffed and refused to pay Derek James his 10 or his 10 or 20%, whatever they negotiated. It's customarily it's 10% for trainers. 
just like managers. But he refused to pay Derek James his 10% after the Terrence Crawford, after he got paid his entire purse. And that's it. He does not want to pay Derek James his 10%. And so that tells me that he does not want to, he, he's not going to fight anymore. Because I don't know any trainer that would feel good about training Errol Spence Jr. after this if he stiffs a guy like Derek James out of his 10%. That's bullshit. So that's it. That's what I heard. Elaborate. Elaborate a little bit more. Um, I don't know why. I can't tell you why Errol, Errol Spence. And now maybe he attributes his loss or uh, on his camp or his preparation or strategy. But look, on the night, you could have had Eddie Futch come back from the grave or Errol or and Emmanuel Stewart in the same corner. And that wouldn't have helped Errol Spence on the night. Now, keep in mind, I did not like when Derek James froze because I'm sure he wasn't anticipating seeing that kind of, well, mastery as early as the end of round one. But still, that's not Derek James' fault. He did his job. He prepared Errol Spence to the best of his ability. And now he's withholding his purse and refused to pay him. And that tells me that Errol Spence Jr. is going to retire. Because I can't see any reputable trainer electing to work with him after this. In my opinion, now this is this is not legal. You can't do this. But in my opinion, Texas State Athletic Commission should revoke his license to compete in the ring until he pays this. And this brings up a big, big quandary. Trainers, okay, protect yourselves. Start devising contracts when you're taking on these kinds of assignments and clients. Because to the best of my knowledge, no trainer devises a contract to train a fighter. They don't. They need to start. Because this is happening way too frequently in our business. So you're saying you don't want to pay him at all? That's what you heard? That's what I've been told by several several respected um colleagues so that's a little different than what we were talking about scholar that's completely different that's 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 the truth guys no 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 i'm saying that's that's different in the conversation we were having earlier yeah because i on. speculated well, I'm, on I'm both sorry. sides joe i said i don't think it, there was no contract because they andy ruiz left um fucking uh robles after the fight so so you gotta you got fighters always do that after they get the big money fights no, no, they no. start I, I'm, I'm talking about yeah they always lose and they always pin it on the trainer but very seldom do they refuse to pay him in this case they were he's refusing to pay him so that tells me he's pinning this loss on the lack of preparation and the wrong strategy and i'm telling him look you could have had eddie futch and emmanuel stewart and custom model all three come back from the grave let's make it a let's make it a foursome let's bring back angelo dundee too that wouldn't have done any good okay he was outgunned so there, is he, he trying not to pay him nothing he's not paying him a damn thing wow so that so, once so again that tells me yeah i don't think he's coming back because i don't know any reputable trainer that would want to take on an assignment after he just did that to his last trainer. Like no one's going to find out about it. This is a very small industry and it's a symbiont industry in which we all know each other and respect each other. And you know, this boxing scholar, okay. Everyone's going to find out everyone. I'm pretty sure though, Joseph, somebody will work with him. Well, it's not going to be anyone decent. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Nobody competent, but you could find you could always you go to your local gym. You could find somebody outside the gym, like, hey man, you want to come with me? You get to travel the world. You ain't gonna pay you nothing, but you're gonna you gonna see the, the you're gonna eat the finest foods and you're gonna get the, a lot of traveling. They'll be like, sure, I ain't doing shit with my life anyway. Yeah, you know what? You're right. And hey, the, you're gonna find a trainer who doesn't know um the difference between a, a left hook and a fish hook. Yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's crazy. And this but really yeah. pisses me off. This is a big problem. So, in my opinion, attorneys need to start getting involved and start to devise standard trainer fighter contracts. And trainers need to start protecting themselves because this is bullshit. Do you know how much time Derek James ju just sacrificed with Errol Spence Jr. for this? Just leading up to this, going back to when they when he was a, a young pro, right? When he was an amateur. This is what you you this is what you work towards. And you know what? Gennady Golovkin did the same thing to Abel Sanchez. As soon as he hit the big time and became a huge moneymaker. Yeah. Um, he dropped Abel Sanchez like a bad habit. But at least he never refused to pay him, though. Like, it, it, the same thing happened with um, Coach Bullet, with Roly Romero, right? As soon as he starts making some real money, yeah, he drops, um, well, yeah, he starts working with Coach Solace. So, so hey, does coach, like that? Coach does that Bullitt change your? Up, oh, she my fault. Bro. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, nah, Coach Bullet brought up a good point in that in the interview, Justin, where he was talking about like back then, Coach Salas wouldn't even look at fucking Roley's direction. That's it, and he is absolutely right on the money. And now, because he's making serious money and he's in the co-main event in a big money fight against Pitbull Cruz, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And you're talking about a guy who never took any fees from Roley because he didn't need the money. He's a successful businessman outside of boxing. Yeah. Coach Bullet, yeah. Cromwell Gordon, great guy, stand-up guy, and you always know where you stand with Coach Bullet. And he's been there from the beginning, and this is the way he gets treated. I'm sick of seeing it. Same thing has happened millions of times with my friend Ronnie Shields. Same thing has happened with James Gogi. That's why he's no longer um, training fighters in the States. And hey, I'm wait, sick of it. When are his fighters gonna fight? Again, Joseph, I want to see oh, who's, who's working. Yeah, they're yeah. going to be they're going to be competing and making their debut this summer. American and they're, they're, they're currently Pro negotiating debut. with several different promoters, including us and TMB. Yeah. Oh shit! You think they might fight at, in San Antonio like a club show? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? When you mention club show, everyone thinks that it's so oh, in front of five, six hundred, maybe a thousand people max. No. The boxing scholar will tell you we we pack the house, no, and it's a big a time production. Who go? Huh? I got a lot of family. I got a lot of family and friends who go to those events. He boxes, yeah, Joe. I'm yeah. sorry, what? He boxes. Oh, very good. Who do you, who do you uh, train with, sir? <laughs> In Austin, <laughs> not really. Nobody. nobody. They don't got no gyms, Joe. Yeah, no he basically self talk, self train. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, you need to you need to commute um, every weekend to San Antonio. I can hook you up with um, several reputable trainers. Um, uh, boxing scholar, could you please give I'll him my personal information, please? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'll be down. Come on, mom lives in San Antonio. I'll be down to commute. Seriously, you should commute every weekend to work with some of these guys. Um, they've got a, you could get great sparring, and we'll get you on one of these cards, man. We'll start turning you into a ticket seller here, man. I bet that. I'm down. We're always I'm we're down always for looking it. for talent, my friend. Joe, so, Joe, he got red hair. I told him I call I told him himself to call himself uh homicide rojo. <laughs> Wait a minute, you've got red hair. Yeah, I'm a red haired Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Hell I'm... yes, brother. Oh my gosh. Dude, we'll yeah. turn you into a ticket seller quick, my friend. <laughs> Dude, that's a publicist yeah, thought... wet dream right there, man. In uh in uh Hispanic country. Holy shit. We're always looking for things to, um, yeah, make our market our fighters and have them stand out. Um, so please, Brandon, please give him uh, my personal information before before he leaves. All right, we got we already got the clambuterol uh, meat ready for you, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I look forward to speaking with you. But hey, you, seriously, that's the honest truth, guys. If you didn't know it. And if you hadn't heard it anywhere yet, well, that is the God's honest truth. Errol Spence refused purse to give Derek James his purse from the Terrence Crawford fight. And that's what that's the genesis of this split. 
Yeah, I I, I speculated that this might he, we might never see him in the ring again just because how he's been active. But giving him nothing, and that's now that's crazy. If he's not going to give him nothing, then yeah, he he should definitely be go to court. I thought he was just reducing what what the the standard ten percent and and offered him something less. Mm -mm. Nope, ain't giving him shit. Apparently, yeah, he's in denial, and this is a problem, guys, around boxing. And I'm almost positive of it. He's listening to the morons who don't know shit about this business that are in his um circle right whispering bullshit in his ear and convincing him of this and we talked about this boxing scholar this is a huge problem that's been going on for a very long time within our business and this is just the latest right and this is wrong and you know what trainers need to start protecting themselves and start devising trainer fighter contracts this is absurd no more handshake bullshit no more um um oh you know what uh, he would never do that to me bullshit as soon as you get these urban advisors what don chargan used to call them same with emmanuel as soon as you get these urban advisors in their ear who don't know shit from shinola convincing them of this uh, telling them that this is the best idea for them yeah terrible things happen look at frank martin okay that's the only reason why he didn't fight shakur stevens and he let some idiots convince him that Oh, that panned out good, though. Hey, yeah, that one, that one did pan out good because now he's fighting Tank. Are you sure about that? Well, that's that's it's supposed to be scheduled. But look, let me just tell you, this is all contingent on whether or not Canelo is a success. They're all oh. in for Canelo. Like, look, I can't believe Steven Espinosa expects everyone to believe that they did receive an annual budget. I'm like, bullshit. This is a distribution deal only. And I know this for a fact. And he's telling reporters that, oh, we're gonna we're gonna announce between 12 and 14 events by the end of the year. Look, they're banking on Canelo being a success. Because this all is contingent on making money from the Canelo event. But if they don't, that's it. That's why you haven't heard an announcement for Tank Davis and Frank Martin. That's yeah, the reality, I was wondering guys. Why they're taking fucking forever on that shit. Cause, cause to me, I mean, me and Scholar, like, it just seemed kind of sketchy at the beginning when we first heard Frank Martin versus Tank. Because, you know, we're not used to seeing Tank in 50 50 fights. Yeah, and especially against someone who couldn't sell out his living room on a Saturday night. Yeah, exactly against yeah a non ticket. So team. the reason why they chose Frank Martin, one, he was the most cost effective fighter with a certain ability and a certain ranking. That's it. Damn, now, why do you think that? Why do you think they chose Tim Zhu versus um, Keith Thurman to headline this first pay per view event? Because the bulk of the money in paying Tim Zhu is coming from No Limits in Australian pay per view, which they don't have anything to do with. They're only giving Tim Zhu a meager guarantee of like a million, million, million thirty. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. Yeah. So uh, this bullshit about, oh, yeah, they gave us a budget. I've seen the money. Bullshit. I know for a fact he is lying. Like no one in the media had the wherewithal to even ask him, so this isn't just a distribution deal? This, uh, Stephen, this isn't just a distribution deal? No one asked him that. And you know what? It's like, can you even call them journalists at this point, Brandon? No, there are people that carry their cameras around that try to get it. Uh, they're glorified like, fans with a camera and a mic. That's it. Yep. And honestly, hey, hey, they're, they're Gus, doing I sent more you harm than good in the business. Hold on, 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 hold on. Let me get you. Okay, I sent it to you. Hey, bro, I'm for the I'm for the hop out. Could you end it for me? Yeah, I can end it. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go right now too. Oh, man, I thought, I thought you and Justin was for the chop it up. All right, I'll just go ahead and we'll just no, chop no, it up. No, on I, I tell you what, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, And once again, Boxing Scholar, keep doing what you do, man, my friend. And hey, brother, is his name Gus? Is your name yeah. Gus? Stop okay, you. please um, get my personal information from Boxing Scholar. And please call me whenever you can. Um, But guys, God bless all of you. And keep supporting your beloved boxing do not steal these broadcasts. Please purchase it. <laughs>
because it could determine the future of our beloved boxing in the American market, guys. Purchase it. Do not steal. God all bless right. all of you guys. All right, all right, Scott. All right. Mike, uh, Francois, both a six to one underdog. Are there any concerns on your part? I don't know anything about that. I don't know nothing about numbers. I just know what I can do. How about kill this mother? Well, f it. It's a fight. So whatever happens, happens. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. F off. Ten toes down, ends don't lie, I need mines right now I took my time, put it all on line Swallow my pride and still can't be denied I been about mine, ten toes down Ends don't lie, I need mines right now I took my time, put it all on the line Swallow my pride and still can't be denied Heard pussy niggas talking, Stan Kingster just an old nigga. Ten toes down, that nigga Kingster still fold niggas. Never been no hoe nigga, just watch the money tree grow big and I be goddamn if I depend on hoes like a nothing ass little broke nigga. Ain't no respect, yet a game switch. Most of these niggas be shameless. Type of niggas be ducking fights, but then put your hands on your main bitch, that's some lame shit. Same niggas that I came with, that CBD mob and that FWFK say fuck it nigga, that's the same flip. Wouldn't switch it up and wouldn't change shit. Fuck boys got the game bent, talking down like you can't be touched, but a nigga like me make it famous. Gotta follow up and get back to business. Got that hard white, that's that catchy grip and go all night just to stack commission. If I follow my just have to slap the clip and y'all sound live, but it's a fact efficient. Full paper chase, that's my active mission. Stay hustle some old, never slacking with it. Stay on code, about that action, nigga. Get to clapping, nigga. Just the natives, baby. That's the crazy thing. Niggas quick to hop up on the gravy train. Trying to rob my way, but too gravy, man. And I never let a bitch not play it, man. Ten toes down. Ends don't lie, I need mines right now. I took my time, put it all on the line. Swallow my pride and still can't be denied. I be about mine. Ten toes down. Ends don't lie, I need mines right now. I took my time, put it all on the line. Swallow my pride and still can't be denied.